talk to me uh, and say like they want to talk about the trip. Um, but if anyone else can help out with that as well, that'd be super swell. Mm -hmm. um, just because I think it's going to be tough for me to manage all of that simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, I Draft streams are honestly the most stressful thing that I do. I can imagine. And, uh, even though this is not, even though this one's not live, it's still gonna be stressful as hell. Mm. Oh, I can probably uh, okay, play so... for about like the first hour, and then I'm probably gonna have to disappear. Okay. okay. That's, cool. That's cool. So wait, we're not actually live streaming this? Yo, it's Butterbig. Yeah. What's up, Butterbig? What's up? I am salty yeah, and live crap and, and, and very angry right now. What are you angry about? I okay. So let me set up the situation. He has a. You are. We are live right now. Just by the way, oh, like, the live? stream is live. So, yeah. So just a heads up. No one's here yet, but we are live. Well, I, I mean, it might as I might as well get it out since I really need to say about it. So what happens is, I have a fifty-seven percent max HP, max defense hippo on the field versus with Sandstream, obviously with the smooth lock. And he has a Lando Eye. So I have Ice Fang specifically for this thing. It doesn't kill. It's not supposed to kill, but it's chip damage. Well, what he does, he goes for a Rock Polish, which, you know, fair enough. Uh, I have an Excadrill in the back, and, you know, be quiet, Brayton. Yes, Devin? But if he goes for a Rock Polish, still outspeeds the... Mention announcements. LS full draft stream. Woo! I'm just gonna post this all over the place. So we're gonna see what happens. I'm just posting in like every league I'm part of, so hey. Here we go, folks. GBA fan discord? Dude. Oh, Shady man. Penguin is streaming. I'm sorry. Go All right. Gonna... So, are you guys talking? <laughs> I'm gonna go to Shady Penguin streaming. Stuff. There's a small okay. echo. Oh yeah, good. that makes sense. So right anyway, now. I Wait, had no, it, and he goes for the rock polish. I click Ice Fang, obviously, and it misses. Now what this does is the next turn, it allows him to go for a Swords Dance, which then. I then click recover and get up to like 97% or something close to that. And then I click, oh no, he clicks fly Z, brings me down to like 7% as I finally go for the ice fang and it brings him down to like 25 like it was supposed to be. But at that point I had a Araquanid that died to rocks. I had a Heliolisk that died to an EQ. I had an Excadrill that died to an EQ. And Hippo that died to EQ. And at that point, just. Mm, it's in my hand. And then it wasn't. Uh, no, what I'm here right now is that you just suck at Mons. You just suck at Mons. the dream. Uh, oh god. I had better mute the stream because I'm hearing this all over again. <laughs> yeah, that would not be ideal. I mean, you're playing on showdown, dude. Like, you have to run 100% accuracy moves. La di da di da. What else, dude? Oh, we lost a man, I think. I might only be in here for a bit because I need to work on homework and stuff, but. <laughs> You are not forgiven. Oh. Oh. If you're not here, you forfeit every game against me this season. Well, that's that's great. Good thing I only face you once. <laughs> no, what if I face you? No, <laughs> no, that would suck if that was the thing. Because I would, like, what if I would face you in, like, semifinals or something, and I just forfeit, and then I lose. Oh, well. <laughs> 
I mean, that's the risk you run for having a life. A gold doesn't have a life, so he can do that. I can't. I just get stuck in traffic. <laughs> I don't have a life. Here we go. Couldn't hear you guys at first. Yep, we're uh, we're here. Uh, Alex mentioned an echo. I don't know. Yeah, what there's like a small that. echo on the stream. I'm not sure where it's coming from. On like no, me? on this of like everyone on the stream here. Let me meet the Discord okay. real quick. That should be resolvable. I actually can fix. I, that might be a problem. I can. I was gonna okay. say it's just that everybody's hearing Discord. Out. No, because it was. I went into the stream and I heard it before I entered the call. So it's like a small, like tiny one. It's not like loud. It's just small. I, it should be gone. I hope my rant didn't bother anyone. Oh my goodness. Um, I need to get water before we like really get started. Team spooky boys. Uh, it's not unacceptable. This is your stream. You're leaving it. What's going on, dude? <laughs> but I will. Yeah, the echo's up. gone now, so we're good. Okay, cool. I just put on headphones, so that should that should be an easy. That should have been an easy fix. Um. All right, let's go with starting here. Uh, so apparently the first overall pick it was uh was a uh, nine tails as you can see on the stream right now. <laughs> uh, this is a not great a pick, you guys. It's uh, it's not a lowland nine tails, so that makes it even better. Uh, so it has drought as a hidden ability. I don't know what its uh, original ability is because I I don't ever use nine tails, but. Uh, <laughs> This is a great pick by you. I'm uh, very happy. Well, I just spoiled uh, the order. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's okay, man. It's okay. Uh, but <laughs> in any case, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great. It's got uses. Um, in addition to moves such as um, oh, hypnosis, no. which I will click every single time. No. Why do, you, why do you change the logo? The logo's wrong. <laughs> oh, the logo. That's, don't look at me, man. I don't know how to use other shots. So. <laughs> I had it all, like, okay, I, like, I'm glad that whoever touched this up fixed uh -oh. up, like, all right. Um, so I pulled up, I pulled up the slide. Fingers crossed. I don't screw this up. Okay. Uh, Here's the thing, though. The logo That's is the wrong. wrong. Logo. It's the wrong logo, yeah. So, yeah, look, like, in the top. The top oh, one. It, that will be corrected in theory for every future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keywords in theory. Okay. Here. All right. So this was just, okay, understandable. See, I'm glad that someone touched, like, touched up the text and everything because it looked like shit. Oh, sorry. I don't know if I can swear. Uh, it looked like garbage. <laughs> It looked like garbage, and um, Wait, how, how, how it was just. It will. Well, no. So some of the. I, I have to make the disclaimer right at the beginning. Um, that. Oh, that's a terrible place not to show. Oh well. Thank you, Natali, for the subscription. Um, trackers. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, some of these slides are done by different people with different sub programs. So some of them will look. Um, slightly different, different. <laughs> little pieces missing. Uh, basically, anything black is just going to be gone for some of the slides and there for other ones. So, like, borders, outlines, things like that are just going to be, like, sometimes there and sometimes not. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I did the best I could. I wanted to say thank you to especially uh, Splurge, Manbird, Alex, uh, who really helped out getting these done, and obviously Eric for coming up with the design in the first place um, and having a... Uh, you know, the breakthrough there. Obviously, the Witty Rooms cut thing does get fixed, um, so I want to move that. I don't like where that is. Uh, but thank you, Splurge, for the follow. Um, but yeah, so I won't be necessarily acknowledging every follower or anything, but um, we are an hour and a half delayed right now, so I figure we should probably get started with this. Um, if everyone's ready and muted except for my co-host if you'd like to introduce yourself what's up everybody it is your boy playmaker here coach of the atlanta right and champion of tbl season three 
And yeah, I'm also a longtime friend of Goldola Dragon. So that's why I'm here, fellas. Yep, so he um, thank was very kind and said that he would be willing to help out um, with this draft stream. Now we do have a handful of coaches in the uh, voice chat right now who will be coming on for their picks when they come up if they have a pick they'd like to talk about. Uh, fellas who are there, if you want to uh, join in, just say in the Discord chat or on Twitch chat that you want to speak about this particular pick and we will let you go. We're not going to take too long on every pick. Um, I have seen draft streams go over four hours. This I this is my fourth one that I've ever done. Um, so I don't expect to... I'm a pretty big veteran of it and the last ones have all been live drafts. So this one being not live is actually going to help uh, speed things along quite a bit. Um, but I'm going to try to keep picks to about 90 seconds uh, to two minutes of talking. So we're not going to waste too much time doing it. Um... But anyway, uh, Playmaker, w are you ready to get started? Oh, sorry, I was watching Shady Penguin's stream. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I get it too. Are you actually watching his stream while you're doing it? I actually was, but I'm, 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 just, I'm just like, waiting for you to like, get the show on the road. Uh, but yeah. All right, all right, all right. So it is 5.30. <laughs> I apologize for being late. That is my fault. Uh, there was massive traffic on the way back home from Boston. I was down there until about 3 o'clock. Expect to be able to get home by 4.00 wasn't uh it's pouring out there was three accidents along the way it took me two hours to go it should take me 45 minutes so um we're gonna get started and make this happen thank you everyone who's here and hanging out um and pick number one of the draft by alex and the wisconsin whimsicots i swear that logo is corrected for the rest of the stream just this one slide is incorrect um is this gonna work am i gonna be able to actually uh make this happen there we go so Whoa. alex and the wisconsin whimsicots Picked up Protean Greninja uh, with the first pick of the draft. It is not an Uber's draft. That is considered tier one in this league. Uh, it went up to a vote and it was voted to remain legal this season. Playmaker, what are your thoughts about this overall number one pick? Uh, well, uh, Protean Greninja holds a special place in my heart. I had it for season three and it, uh, it racked up quite a good number of kills. Uh, I like the fact that it's able to change typing uh, it's uh, got pretty good uh, attack and special attack, so it can be uh, a mixed set as well. I love ha how it also gets U-turn, um, and it's it's just also a really fast Pokemon as well. And people have to um, take that into consideration when uh, when going up against it. Also has priority with Water Shuriken, and yeah, I've like. This thing came in clutch for me uh, plenty of times, and just also having the, you know, just I also love substitute Protean Greninja just because um, want to change its typing to normal typing. So if you're going up against a Ghost type and it tries to click Shadow Ball on you for whatever reason, and you just go in a sub, it's a free yeah. sub, um, and this thing can do it all. Base. You know, pretty mixed attacker, um, ridiculous coverage moves, uh, T spikes, which is absurd, and regular spikes, which is just like ridiculous for this thing they even have. Um, and no, it's not bulky, but it is super fast. So, uh, and then being able to get stab on every move, change its typing at will, and with 122 speed, very few things are at speeding in this format. So, honestly, great mon. I think it deserves to be a number one overall pick in a format in which it's legal. Um, and Alex picked it up. Following that, we had Nick and the Missouri Magma Zones picking up Zygarde 50%. Oh, he wanted to speak about it. I apologize. Um, sorry, Alex. Do you want to jump <laughs> yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, go back. it's okay. Um, so, it's just going to be real quick because I really was kind of hesitant to draft this thing, surprisingly. Um, specifically because I had never, like, used it before, basically. And I, I, I already know it's really good, obviously. It's really good mon. But, um... Yeah, I was going to go with something more comfortable that I was used to, which was uh, Celesteela, but I knew that um, I would have never have been able to use this thing at all this season if I let it go past the first round, so I decided to to draft it, so yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I think you're going to have fun with it. I think it's a good yeah, mod, it so definitely is. get excited for, for just some creativity in your set building. Don't lock this thing into one thing, a one like move set that you're using every week. That is where you're going to fall oh, short. Yeah. This thing should be using its versatility to its For to sure, its for sure. Um, and yes, you guys definitely did see the next pick being Zygarde, 50% Zysnek. Um, 
so strong in format. Just got banned to Ubers in o in the Smogon format. We allow it again uh, in League format, just like every other league. I don't think this thing is broken in League format, but very, very good. Access to good priority and extreme speed. Really solid stab moves. The most spammable move in the game, uh, in Thousand Arrows. Uh, but besides that, you can run Outrage, you can run Iron Tail, you can run Dragon Tail, you can run subsets uh, with, you know, some leftovers to make this thing really bulky. You can run Yachi Berry, you can run Resto Chesto. I mean, this thing does a million different things. We've seen it before in League format. I don't have much more to say about it. It's just a really good mod. Playmaker, if you want to add anything. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, just like what really stands out to me is the above average HP and defense. I think that oh, yeah. really um, puts it in a special category. Um, and it's the only other Dragon Ground uh, type besides Garchomp. Uh, so, in, the, in League format, I should say. Um, well, you could count you could count Zy 10, but. I mean, like, when I say Zygarde, I mean, like. <laughs> uh, it's, it's still a Zygarde if you're talking about Zy 10. Uh, that's true, that's true, that's true. But. Yeah, that, uh, I mean, like... But yeah, I don't have too much to say about it, honestly. I think it's it's a good mon. It's shown to be very useful uh, week to week in terms of being available for the right matchup. Uh, oh, Honor's popping in with a Flygon reminder, Playmaker. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I, st I stand corrected. <laughs> I stand corrected. Um, and just to make sure, if anyone in the chat says that there's like, the music's too loud or anything, I will for sure fix it. Just tell me, uh, and I will happily correct anything that is an issue. Um but I need you guys to tell me that because I obviously don't know. Um, and if you guys can't hear Playmaker, if you want him to be louder, I can I can boost whatever I need to boost. So you guys tell me. Um, but we're going to move on to pick number three. Uh, and at this point, we're going to get Mega Latios. Uh, excuse me, Mega Latios. Oh my gosh, that's a mistake I shouldn't be making. Um, Mega Latios by the British Brooksish, coached by... Uh, nope, uh, by Trent Thunders, coached by Brendan. God, I hate draft streams. Have I ever told you guys? Uh... So, coached by Darkest Devil, 26, Brendan, um, who I don't believe is here with us right now, but may join us later uh, in chat. Um, but he is uh, going to draft Mega Latias. Do you think this deserves to be the first Mega drafted, and is this one of the best Megas in League format to you? Me? Um, wait, is that 150 speed I'm seeing? Spadef. Special defense. I was, I was about to say, whoa, like, holy crap. <laughs> um... <laughs> no, uh, I mean, no, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think it's a very good Mega. Whether I would say it's, it should be the first Mega off the board, I, I think it's really good. Uh, don't get me wrong, I don't, I just think that it has, like, a lot of weaknesses. Uh, like, too many for me to be able to say, oh, I'll just take that thing. Like, I, pro I personally am not a person that uses the, uh, the Lotties all too much. Um, I do like like regular Latios a lot, uh, but wouldn't necessarily like pick it in league format just because it has so many weaknesses. Uh, but then again, it's also a very good Pokemon, and if you want to even elaborate on what it can do, it can't do, you can. Yeah, I mean, I've so I've used Latios before, and Splurge wants to talk, and I'll give him a minute in a sec, but. Uh... I've used regular Latias, I've never drafted Mega Latias, uh, but that thing was absolutely crucial to me making finals that season. Um, it was, it can do just about anything you want it to. Um, I ran Tailwind, I ran Healing Wish, I ran Reflect Type, I ran Good Stabs, it gets access to crazy coverage moves, it can be a defogger, it uh, levitates off the ground, so really useful in that sense because it just gives you some sort of ground immunity, which is always nice to have. Um, Sab, Psychic, and Dragon types are really, really nice stabs. Draco Meteor from this thing. I mean, Mega's base 140 special attack, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it just does a whole bunch of different things, and it does them really, really well. Um, obviously Roost, uh, Calm Mind is definitely an option. Uh, he can go Roost, Calm Mind, Substitute Sword Power, like that, I've seen that before. Uh, he can run Refresh on this thing, so it can be anti-status. So obviously this thing does a million different things, and base 110 speed's amazing. Um, and Splurge, if you wanna jump in, Feel free. You got something to say? Well, about I mean, it? I thought I did, but then you just went off and did that. Um, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I wanted to jump to Megalatias' defense because it is broken because it's not so much about its defensive prowess, it's just about how much utility it can use and just how unpredictable its sets can be. Because you do have like the reflect yeah. type, you also have stored power, for goodness sake. I mean, like on this thing with uh, 150, 120, 80, that's in reverse order, but who cares? Uh, bulk, like. 
you, you just click calm mind with the max defense thing and it just does its thing. Like, it's insane. Anyway, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're not hitting this thing with some really strong stab move that's going to be super effective, um, generally on the physical side, you're going to be in trouble. Um, so moving on to the British Bruxish's pick, um, I named that team. I remember giving David that name and regretting it immediately because I knew I would have to say it all the time. Um, he's going to go with his classic round one Galvantula pick. Um, he claims every single season that, I mean, he's made semis every season with it. Um, so hard to fault him at some point, but he claims that it's the one thing on his team that he cannot allow to be sniped. And honestly, if there's one thing you can't allow to be sniped, you take it first round. That's what you do. So, uh, Playmaker, what do you feel about fourth overall Galvantula? <laughs> uh, gosh, uh, well, like you said, you know, if, uh, if it, if it, uh, works, don't fix it. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, that's, that's what they say. I mean, yeah, and it's honestly, arguably the best Sticky Weber in the format. I would potentially disagree with that. I think if you're looking for best Sticky Weber in terms of being able to get them up, you're going to be looking at a Raquanid, and if you're looking at fastest Sticky Weber, you're going to be looking at Rabombi. Um, I do think that other Sticky Webers like Masquerain, Lee Vanny, and Slurpuff do offer some really interesting utility that Galvantula doesn't, but an electric type Sticky Weber, um, so then it gets Sticky Web and Volt Switch, um, is pretty nice to have. Uh, an electric type that's not weak to ground is pretty nice to have. You know, I'm just trying to think of things to say about Galvantula okay. at this point. It's a great, in my opinion, round four or five pick. That's but um, fourth overall. I mean, it also gets uh, Volt Switch and Energy Ball. Um, yeah, it does get some interesting coverage moves. It does get those, uh, I mean, the, yeah, the interesting coverage moves, and uh, it's also uh, it's also very fast. Um, yeah, base 108's nice. Um, I've used it before to great success. I've loved it when I've used it. So if David doesn't want to get sniped, David's going to take Galvantula. Um, Anyway, so next up we have Coinx uh, and the Reno Raikou champion of the Summer League as well as the PCL Season 1. Uh, he is back for the TBL Season 4 and he is picking up Mega Mawile first pick for him. Uh, this thing is horrifying base 105 attack with huge power is scary. I mean, there's no two ways about it. This thing hits like a truck, sucker punch for priority great coverage moves in the fight in the fangs and punches um and just i mean it stabs are out of this world it's got really solid bulk um in 125 defense 95 special defense i don't know if there's much i need to say honestly like doing a draft stream to, to some degree is just like saying the same thing every other yeah, draft stream much. says about these upper picks and then like later on is when it gets interesting yeah. um but yeah, I mean, if anyone, if you want to say anything about this Mega Maw Wild pick, I think fifth is a steal. Yeah, well, you know, I actually picked it up in free agency in TBL season three somehow. Um, <laughs> and I was like, wait a second. Like, I, I mean, I had Mega Manetric, but I was like, what? Like, I'll go with the uh, the awesome power of huge power. And, um, and you know, it did, it did pretty decent for me. I just... Uh, do much better in a trick room setting. Uh, I wasn't like trying to run trick room every week, you know. So like, it. Yeah. I mean, there's only just so much you can do. I mean, it does get walled by a few things. Um, like I remember there was one week I got walled by an Arcanine just because, like, it could like it could like Will O Wisp or Morning Sun, and I was slower than it, and I was trying to hit Sucker Punch. But I couldn't really hit the Arcanine because <laughs> it would just go for stupid status moves like that. And like, while while it, it is Fire powerful, uh, its speed is kind of the thing that a little bit bounces. Yeah. Out. Um, yeah, I think. I mean, I think it's not a broken Pokemon, but I do think it's a quality round one pick. Um, and I, I have to be honest, I would have chosen this over Galvantula in round one personally, but. <laughs> uh, uh, we haven't even gotten to my pick yet. And next up is yours, so I'm going to let you talk about this almost exclusively. Uh, the Atlanta Raichus, coached by Playmaker, your Season 3 champion and co-host here on the stream, picked up Zera Aura as technically the second Electric-type drafted, but, um, you know, 
first uh, first tier two drafted. We did make Zara Aura tier two in this league, so be aware of that as we move forward in the draft. I uh, I really liked it being a tier two, and I mean a lot of people do believe it is a tier two Pokemon as well. So like, uh, so I so you can't really like fault me for voting that it should be tier two. A lot of people could have drafted ahead of me, like especially David if he wanted that even faster electric type, but. Uh, but yeah, some of the things that really stand out to me are its, uh, its speed and its uh, sort of, uh, really good special attack and attack. Uh, and it also gets uh, um, a good bit of uh, coverage in just about everything. Um, it's fast. Does it get Ice Punch? Uh, it does get Ice Punch, but obviously it's not Stab. Um, yeah. it's, I mean, it's got fun moves. Iron Tail, Outrage, Close Combat, Ice Punch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Volt Switch. U uh, does it get U-Turn? It just gets Volt Switch. No U-Turn. Okay, yeah. I mean, but still, it's a pretty solid Electro-type mixed attacker. Um, incredibly fast. And to not give up a Mega Slot, but hit a base speed of above, like, 140 is out of this world, so... I was really um, between this and Celesteela. Uh, I mean, like, this is because Celesteela's got, uh, it's a, it's a really great Steel-type with very few weaknesses, but... You know, I just, I've never, well, I've only used Zero once and, uh, when I was mocking against you, and I just had so much fun with it. Uh, like, you know, quick yeah. attack, Zero Aura, you know, always coming in clutch. That was, that was a nuisance I remember <laughs> fighting, oh my god. That's um, fun. And Volt Absorb's great, uh, they have the Electric Immunity, it's only got the one weakness in Ground Type, obviously as a Mono Electric Type. Um, we do have a correction in the, in the Discord that it does not get Ice Punch, so. I thought it, uh, maybe this website I looked at was wrong, but, um. But, I mean, base 102 special attack, you can run Hidden Power Ice on that and be pretty fine, so. Pretty much. Uh, all right, so next up, we have the FC Mighty Ennas, coached by Hydra, uh, and it's all in caps, so I think he's screaming at me, um, all the time. But, that, <laughs> it's actually the FC Mighty Enna, if you look at the bottom of his logo, um, but he picks up Tapu Koko, which was the biggest snipe to me in this entire draft and made me rework everything I wanted to do for the entirety of the draft, which was super frustrating. Um, and this thing is always, always, always around one pick. I've never gotten to use one personally. Um, and honestly, I think it is one of the coolest uh, round one options available. Electric Fairy. Um, great speed in 130, not as high as Zara Auras, but then again, slightly higher attack, um, and its dual fairy stab does give it a couple of extra options with stab dazzling gleam and stuff like that. Additionally, um, if he does decide to make it a Z user, then he does have access to Japunium Z, which is a free 75% on literally anything, which is pretty amazing because with Tapu Koko's speed, that means you're probably going to be able to revenge it, um, any, any potential check to this thing. Um, you just get to revenge it, like, the next turn. So, I love Coco. I've never gotten to use one, but I love the concept of it. I love the way people have used it against me before. It's been really, really annoying to deal with. Um, anything you want to add to that? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I remember in some of the mocks that we had, whenever I was using Top Coco, I really found a pretty neat fascination with Z Mirror Move. Gives you, mm -hmm. uh, plus two attack in addition to being able to use the uh, Z move of the last move that was used. So like, I, I, th I think it's Z mirror move is like one of the more broken things that Tapu Koko does. Uh, but you know, also attack and then electric terrain and, uh, and so yeah, I mean like it, uh, a good bit of uh, interesting things that it can do. Uh, and I have to prep yep, against and the then thing. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> obviously U-Turn plus uh, Volt Switch, always good coverage for an electric pick to have. So um, This thing, pretty solid round one pick as it goes in about the middle of the round. And we follow this up with the St. Louis Charizards picking up one of the best Tapu Koko answers uh, in Lander Therian form. Obviously, Hidden Power Ice, a threat. But Lander Therian form, I've used it as a Tapu Koko check. Yachi Berry, Assault Vest, whatever you want to run on it, it's not going to take too much damage. Um... And this thing is fun. I do enjoy me some Landorus there in form. I had, uh, I had it in the ICBA Season 4, which if nobody saw or if anybody missed, I did actually win a championship 
with this thing on the team. Uh, it is super fun to use, super interesting, um, really versatile in terms of what it's capable of doing. Stealth Rocker, Defogger, Knockoff, U-Turn, Stab, uh, Z-Fly, Earthquake, Rock Polish, Swords Dance. I mean, this thing gets literally everything, um, and Hef wants to say a few words. So, Hef, why don't you go in and say more than I could possibly say about this thing? I mean, you pretty much covered it all right there. I, I've had this mod on about, I want to say at least four of my draft leagues, and I really love it as a ground type. The fine, I, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal to me, but the ground type is just, I just really love using it as a ground type mod. And like you said, it has all the utility and coverage and all that fun stuff to make a really great team with, so. Um, yeah, so so when we did in the TBL Discord, if you are not a member of the TBL Discord, um, I believe exclamation point Discord will at least lead you to my personal Discord, and then you can get you to the TBL TBL fan Discord from there. Um, but uh, if you want to, uh, if you are not in there and have not seen the brackets that we've run, we did a like move based bracket, and Landers the top four moves in that bracket were, I believe, Stealth Rock. Uh, momentum based moves like Volt Switch and U-Turn, Knockoff, and Toxic and Landorus Therian, and it's, for, it's a friend ground flying type, Gliscor, were two of the only mods to learn all four types of those moves, which was pretty interesting. Um, so basically it gets everything broken about Pokemon, everything good about Pokemon this thing has access to. Oh, and if you make um, a Z-move mod, oh, it just destroys everything. It puts in, <laughs> it puts in work. Uh, I'm just happy that you are in a division that I do not face this season. Well, what about you? You get uh, those things too. I didn't say it was the only. <laughs> oh, you said, you said, said Daddy Glyce, of course. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay, but I don't, I mean, Mute, obviously, Mute gets everything, so. <laughs> I was just messing um, with you, buddy. <laughs> nah, you're good, you're good. Um, but next up is Tishen and the Fancy Land Garboders. He got sniped, I think, like six times out of the first eight picks. It was wild to watch his just like mental breakdown. Um, but speaking of Mew, uh, in that perfect segue, Playmate, do you want to talk about Mew at all? Um, no, I don't want to talk about Mew. No, I'm kidding, dude. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, no, Mew's, uh, Mew's uh, pretty cool, you know, uh, very balanced. And all of its stats, and like you said, it gets just about everything. All the TMs and all the move tutor moves and... There's, I think it has some like and special some event level up moves, moves and yeah. moves. event moves, level up moves. I mean, it's just there's a lot going on there. It's uh, just uh, it's not a one trick pony by any measure of the no, imagination. No, 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 no. Honestly, when I've used Mew in league format, my biggest like it always is the sixth mon I add to the team, and it always <laughs> fills whatever hole I need. You know, like. I wait until I've got like the other five mons picked out and built, and then I'm like, okay, what's missing? What do I need? A defensive pivot? Got it. Do I need a stealth rocker? Got it. Defogger? Got it. Do I need like a wall, um, a cleric? Got it. Like whatever it needs to be, um, I think Mew does put in the work in that the goal, sense. You just kind of cut and... out there. You uh, you alive? I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, can the chat hear me? Can everyone can on the stream you. hear me? Or, like, how's it going? Splurge can hear me. Playmaker's the one who's cutting out, I think. Happy to you, too. Rip. Dude, rip Playmaker. Uh. Oh, yeah. wait. <laughs> I can hear you. Oh, he's back. Maybe? Yo, can you All hear right. me? There we go. Yeah, I can hear you now. You you cut out there for, like, a, a hot no, sec. No, you cut out. So... The stream, the stream has spoken and it is me? new. Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm the one that's been yelling. Okay, that's fine. So, <laughs> so that. Anyway, it seems like it's back, whatever the issue was. I am in the middle, like my, uh, right now here in New England, we are getting racked by one of the worst, like torrential downpours of January history because it's usually snowing. Um, so. Yeah, it might be on my side. I'm not 100% sure, but hopefully the Wi-Fi stays up and everything's okay for this stream. I hope so too. But we're going to follow this up with Splurge's pick, and he has asked to speak about it, so I'm not going to take anything away from his time. I can't use this mon. Kiram Black is something I drafted and dropped and or traded like not that long into the season because I just could not figure out how to make it work. But someone who uses it well is terrifying, so talk to me, Splurge. 
Tell me how to do well, it. Well, so this is the interesting thing is so that I actually wanted to pick a handful of ones I've never used before. And I've never used before because I always get rubbish positions in drafts like I have this time as well. But fortunately this time, Kieran Black played this one. He says when he's drafting above me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's got an awesome set of stats. The only reason that it's not banned is because it doesn't have a physical ice type move that's actually any sort of decent. Um, and interesting speed too, which I think is why it's sometimes difficult to really utilize properly, but it's going to be interesting. Um, I'm always excited to try and really crank up the levels of heat that I'm able to get out of everything. Yeah, I mean, I think this thing has potential. I faced very good Kiram Lax. I just know that with my own playstyle, it did not work as well as I was hoping it was going to. Um, and I ended up trading it later on in the season. But um, that was the the wild team of Kiram Black, Tapu Lele, and Mega Lopenny, uh, which was super fun. Uh, and I still managed to start the season 0 3. So, uh, <laughs> so we all know how talented that I am with this thing. It's not it's not what I want, but. You can't deny those stats. I no. mean, no stat below base 90 is ridiculous. It is insane. Um, yeah, like you said, the only reason it's legal is because it doesn't get a physical ice type move that uh, isn't Z isn't only usable as a Z yeah. move. Um, but let's be honest, if you use it as a Z move, it's going to get a kill. Yeah, uh, Unless something yeah. like quad resists it. Like, <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it goes. pretty wild. And Moldbreaker is pretty awesome with the two, uh, just because like, yes. it just freaking destroys Melodic. It freaking destroys Mega Venusaur. Um, so I, it's, it's pretty nice to have an ability like mold breaker, just break down walls like those. So, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. going to be fun. Um, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to move on to my pick next. Uh, and I had a bit of a discussion, uh, with what to do after Tapu Coco got sniped. Um, and we, I was looking, I was like, okay, I really don't care what other electric type tier one I get, but I do want one, uh, but it doesn't matter if it's Thundee T or Zapdos or um, like whatever, I don't really care. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm late round one. Let me just pick up like one mod that I've always wanted to use in format. I know it was a reach. I know it was like a little early. Yes, I picked up round one High Dragon. Uh, I don't, I don't love the fact that I did this, <laughs> but I've always been sniped of this mod. Uh, and so I wanted to try it. Um, I've always wanted to try it. It gets, it's got base 105 attack and 125 special attack. It gets access to a really good variety of moves on both sides. Um, uh, between U-turn superpower, um, on one side, and then you've got Draco Meteor, obviously, Dark Pulse. Um, like, it gets Defog, it gets, it's Levitate off the ground. So I figured, why not? You know, let's give it a shot, see how it goes, uh, and... We're gonna we're gonna see. Um, is it a round one pick? More than Galvantula is, is all I have to say about it. <laughs> oh damn! Um, Shots fired. But <laughs> but it's not it's not the one that I necessarily think I should take in round one. Um, but that is what it is. Um, I think it's gonna be fun to use this season. I think it does fit my playstyle really well. Uh, it gives me a nice little speed tier just under base 100. So I'm pretty hyped about that. Um, the nice thing about base 98 speed tier for me is that forces someone else to take their 100 base speed Pokemon and make it max speed if they want to make sure they're outspeeding me, um, which is actually super convenient. Um, also, I do have a Dragon type that does not get outsped by Mimikyu, which is also pretty nice. Um, but otherwise, yeah, there's not a ton, not a ton to say about it since it is probably a pretty solid round three pick, and I picked it up uh, late round one. So last up of the round, we have the Fort Wayne Gastrodon, coached by yours truly. Manbird, the Phoenix, bright, lovely Manbird. Um, I don't even know what his actual username is anymore. Um, but he has the wheel and he picks up Mega Gallade. Playmaker, I just spoke for a long time, so why don't you take over this one? Is Manbird even on? He probably is, right? He said he wanted to talk about Serp and a couple of oh, okay. later, but I just like revealed some of his team. But like, whatever. So <laughs> if he wants to speak, he can. Okay. But... Well, if he's not speaking, I guess I'll speak, but. Uh, yeah, no, Mega Gallade, it's, uh, it's pretty good. You had it on your, uh, IBL team, if I'm not mistaken, right? Or ICBA. 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 The, yeah, the, See, the championship that, team. That one. See, I, I get confused with all these abbreviations, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you, it was, uh, 
uh, as you can attest, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's got uh, a couple of obvious strengths to it. Uh, like its uh, its defenses are pretty good. Its attack is is pretty average. No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's, it's it's incredibly good, <laughs> uh, and its its speed is also really good. Uh, uh, and then it gets priority with Shadow Sneak. Uh, it's got close combat with a stab as well as uh, Psycho Cut and Zen Headbutt. It also gets Destiny Bond, Will O Wisp, all these other interesting techs that uh, can go a long way with it. So, Yeah, and then Bulk Up, Swords Dance, Leaf Blade, Knock Off, Earthquake, Rock Slide, like Ice Punch, like whatever you want, really. Ow. It gets all three elemental punches, so... Yeah, Manbird, why don't you go ahead and talk about your round one mega Oh, blade. yes. I, I, I was having some trouble getting my mic to work. But, uh, but Blade is honestly, uh, I can say after using it for quite a bit, is my favorite mega in format, hands down. Excellent bolt thanks to gaining defense boosts upon Mega Volsh Evolution. It's got 110 speed, which is like my favorite speed tier to hit with any Mon, because it beats those base 100s that are endemic throughout Pokemon. And it also, uh, like Playmaker was alluding to, is a super good mon to tech stuff on. You can run sub bulk up, you can run a Will-O-Wisp set, you can run um, Wish if you want to. You can bring bulky Wish. Um, you could even, I believe, call it mine, so you can even run special if you're out of the universe. But yeah, Mega Gallade is a mon <laughs> real spicy. that I wanted round one of this league, and I promised myself I was gonna get it, and uh, here we are. All right, so with that, we actually conclude round one, and I will do a quick little recap here. So we had uh, Protean Greninja, Zygarde, Mega Latias, Galvantula, Mega Mawile, Zeraora, Tapu Koko, Landorus Therian, Mew, Kieran Black, Hydreigon, and Mega Gallade to wrap up the first round of picks here in the TBL Season 4. Um, Playmaker, give me a, a best pick and worst pick of the round. Uh, so best pick was by David with the Galvantula. Uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with sticky webs and no, I'm kidding. Okay, uh, real talk, real <laughs> talk, no, real talk. Uh, I gotta say, uh, I really love the uh, the Landers Therian pick at pick eight. Usually, this is things you should take within the first uh, three, four picks, and and just it has a lot of uh, really good utility and uh, it can be. Uh, can be quite the uh, um, threat it we all know and very much love so um, <laughs> and then I'd say for worst pick this is a hard one um, I, I love how like you're just like in, sus in suspense but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, he could have definitely, uh, David could have gotten Galvantula at a later round. What I'll say about it, it's not that it's a bad Pokemon, it's just that I think it's way too early to, to pick. Yeah, I agree with that, that David probably could pick that up later. Um, you know, I honestly do think that most of this round one was fairly standard. Um, I do believe that David and I are actually probably the two people that picked something that might have been a little bit out there. Um, for round one, especially with what was still left on the board. But uh, with what I had planned, Hydreigon was part of my original plan. We were just going to replace Coco with another electric leader, and I didn't really feel like I needed to take it round one, so I'm not too worried about taking Hydreigon and then moving from there. But David's logic was the same, right? Like, Galvancho was part of his plan, he didn't want to lose it, same way that Hydreigon was with me, so he took it. Um, I disagree with doing that on the fourth pick. It's a little bit easier just to justify that on the 11th pick. Um, but we'll get into round two right now, so we're not going to waste any more time talking about the end of round one here, and we are just going to go back along the wheel with Manbird and his Tornadus Therian form at the beginning of round two. Now, Mega Gallade, Tornadus T, super cool combination of mons, incredibly fast so far, hits incredibly hard. Um, this thing has coverage it just doesn't deserve to have, in my opinion, um, and then Regenerator, which is super annoying. Um, this thing is, is a lot of, it's a lot of fun. I've never personally had the chance to draft it, but I've had a lot of chances to like see it in draft format 
uh, and prep for it, and it just seems like a super fun mod to have. Oh, uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Yes, Paul. Oh, never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, okay, I'm ready now. So, uh, I would all like right, to introduce ahead. you all to Manbird. Uh, yes, Elf. Uh, it's such a beautiful boy. Uh, Hi, Manbird. <laughs> Hi, man bird. <laughs> this thing is honestly such a disgusting beast. With uh, Hurricane, I know it doesn't have the best special attack, but it's got the good bulk that it can live basically any non-super effective hit, and then it gets damage off, it gets U-turn off, it gets that sick 121 speed momentum move, it gets Sludge Wave, it gets that Hurricane, like Fairies. Steels don't bother it because it gets both Heat Wave, uh, it gets, it does not get loose. It would probably be a little bit too broken if it did, but like, this thing is just such an amazing utility mon. Uh, and with Mega Delayed, they, they perform a very nice one two punch. Uh, and they just, oh, it also gets knockoff, which is my favorite move in the game, hands down, just because of the utility that it offers. And I just. Information too, like, knockoff's a great move. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do think Tornti is a very, very solid mon. Um, and a really quality start of round two. I could not believe, admittedly, as we go into the next pick here, that Celestila was still available in the second pick uh, that I had going into round two. Um, I hate this thing. Adamant, adamantly and just will always swear to the fact this thing is ugly, it is gross, and it is a pain. I definitely hate picked this. <laughs> uh, but because it was still available, I felt like, sure, let's give it a shot as my tier one. We'll deal again with the electric type a little later on in the draft um, and figure something out. Obviously still have access to my free picks uh, since Hydreigon is a tier two in this league. Uh, but Celestila, it's strong. It's stupidly strong. Uh, very, very good mon. Gets ridiculous coverage and utility for what it is, uh, which is just an ugly form of the Empire State Building. Um, and it's just absolutely out of this world in terms of its uh, ability to do literally whatever it wants. Um, Subseed is an option. You can run Z Fly, you can run Autotomize, you can run... The, I don't even know what coverage moves. I actually haven't looked into this that much. It's ridiculous though it's just uh i i hate it so much i'm like mad at myself or i i'm upset that it's on my screen right now i'm upset that it's on my team right now but like at least no one else has it so you just give it to me dude I don't like it. i don't mind like much <laughs> uh yeah like uh, i mean my team's available as for for it to as a home for it um but you know we we had this in our uh in our tag team league too and it was uh it was pretty fun to use yeah, it was a good mod. I mean, I, I, it just doesn't die. It doesn't. Which I mean, and at the end doubles. of the day, like that's how I win games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't die in singles. Doesn't die in doubles. This thing doesn't die in triples. Like this thing's wild. Um, I've actually never. I don't even think this thing's in a game that has a triples format. But um, if it was, it wouldn't die. So next up, we have the Bracknell B drills going back around to splurge, and he picks up Clefable. So yeah, he's got KB and Clefable. Ugh, uh, that's all I can say about it. Playmaker, you want to say anything? Um, yeah, I've uh, I've loved using Fable in OU a lot. Um, it's just even in a draft league, this thing is really good. Uh, and then in draft league, I'm sure like they can do a lot as well. Um, I just kind of was like, and for like future teams ahead of me as well, like in, in like future weeks, and I was just like, man, this Fable is gonna be as annoying as hell because. Gosh, like unaware of fable, it just like eats up everything. It's not even funny. And yeah, well, I I faced this team week one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no. So a uh, little little um, shameless plug going on in the middle of my own draft stream that is actually taking place. Week one battle will be taking place tomorrow, six p.m. on stream. What? So if you are not already following me here. Do so within the next 24 hours and you will get a chance to watch this 
and potentially my PCL week four battle, which will be going on at eight o'clock tomorrow as well. So uh, got lots of battles coming up. Tonight's when I had to get the stream done so that I could stream that battle uh, tomorrow. So Splurge, you're here, yep. my opponent. Um, you want to talk about Clef? I mean, it's kind of the same reason that you got Celesteela. I much prefer to abuse it than have to prep for it. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's just Clefable. I, it's something which you hate with an utter vengeance when you have to prep for it because it just Absolutely. does not die. And it's one of the very few mons which has that much of a depth of move pool that you genuinely can't pinpoint what kind of set is actually going to come up against you. Because it is able to be a setup sweeper, it is able to be a cleric, a utility mon, it's got rocks, it has wish passing, it just does absolutely everything. And then, oh, of course, it gets uh, cosmic power and stored, and stored power. So, I mean, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so, real solid mon, real solid team, scary, bulky, annoying, you know, all that. Yep. Um, and so we'll move on now to T Shen's next pick, which was actually the second snipe of me, and I was not expecting this thing to go in round two at all. Uh, but that is Mega Aerodactyl. So this thing is incredibly fast, actually outspeeding your Zara Aura and can bop it with an earthquake. Um, unless you're obviously scarfed, but really, really solid, tough claws, uh, boosted 135 attack with 150 speed, a rocker, a defogger if you really want it to be. It does get access to roost and has moderately decent bulk and can take a hit or two as long as they are uh, either neutral or resisted. Um, but yeah, Roar is always fun to use. It gets pretty solid coverage moves in like Ice Fang, uh, can take pretty good advantage of its uh, Tough Claws ability. Um, obviously it's Stab, Rock Slide not doing that, but Aerial Ace is, which is actually pretty nice. Um, so, really solid pick. Uh, Playmaker, do you have anything you want to talk about at Mega Air Dactyl um, here? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, basically you hit just about everything on the head with uh, with basically what it can do. Uh, yeah, that's that speed is something that a lot of people are gonna have to take into account. Uh, and yeah, no, I mean it's uh, it's definitely a good good uh, Pokemon. I think round two was a bit early for it, but then again, if you say that you got sniped because it got taken at this pick, then I mean, I guess. How much of well, a I was it? looking at it late. I was looking at it later on down the line. I'd already picked in round two, but uh, and then once I picked up Celesteela, I was really debating whether or not I wanted Dactyl anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but it was definitely something I was looking at. Coco Dactyl would have been a lot of fun, in my opinion. I think I would have had fun with that uh, if that had gone my way. But I didn't get either of them, so that is the way the cookie crumbles mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, following this, we have Hef and his St. Louis Charizards picking up my Lodic, one of my favorite Pokemon in format. His team's looking real scary. Not only does he have Intimidate support, but he also has Counter Intimidate Pressure um, in Milotic's uh, competitive ability. This thing is so hard to kill. I love it so much. I love Milotic. It's funny because I hate Celesteela for the same reason, but I love Milotic. Um, this thing does like maybe two things. You know, you're either going to be running it physically defensive with Marvel Scale uh, and a Flame Orb and Scald, Toxic, Recover either protect or uh, maybe one coverage move an ice beam or something um, or you're going to be running it uh, more offensively with competitive um, and maybe scald ice beam dragon tail um, maybe mirror coat to tech on there it doesn't do a lot else it's always going to have recover uh, you're pretty like you can be pretty sure that it's going to be running either flame orb or competitive um, like if it's leftovers it's a little bit harder to tell but it's probably not going to be uh, relying on marvel scale if it's not flame orb but, God, I love this thing. No, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's not really much else I can add to that, just because he covered everything it does. Uh, but I think, is that Hef on the line? Yeah, I think Hef just pulled himself in because he wants to talk about my Lodic, which is totally reasonable. <laughs> Best bulky water in format. Go ahead, Hef. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, I love my using my Lodic. Like, I really liked using it before any draft leagues. And then once I drafted it in Kalanax's league, I just went and destroyed everyone with it. Just toxic everything. And I got, I think in like three games, I got like 12 kills with it, which is just stupid. And I only died once. And from then on, I just always wanted to draft it. So I definitely did not want to waste picking it right away, my second pick, so. 
Yeah, I mean, this thing, it's its a great mon, honestly. Uh, especially if you're running Flame Orb or something, it can be a status absorber. Um, since you can't really get hit by it. It also gets Refresh of its own, so if you really want it to be competitive and you're worried about status, you just run Refresh on it. Um, its coverage is questionable. It's not great, but obviously Hidden Power can supplement that. Um, but its bulk is out of this world. And 81, hey, it's a weird speed tier, but it does have speed a whole bevy of things at base 80, so, uh, why you not, you know? max speed. I mean, or just if they're not running speed, because a lot of base 80s don't run speed, like Mega Venusaur, uh, a lot of, like, you know, you won't see every single Chandelure running at Dragonite. speed, so things like that. Dragonite runs speed. Yeah, a lot of base, well, some, some base 80s do, uh, some base 80s need it, some base 80s don't. Sort of depends. And Dragonite's never killing Milotic. Ever. Like, just Challenge ever. accepted, dude. Go for it. You didn't even drop <laughs> Dragonite, but, like, go for it. <laughs> I was thinking about it, though. I really was. Dude, I've never even considered drafting Dragonite before. Dragonite's um, so, next up, we have... Uh, <laughs> next up, we've got the FC Mighty Enna's picking up Tier 2 Infernape. Um, I have seen this thing be Tier 1 in many, many leagues. In fact, I just drafted it in the PCL at a Tier 1 slot. Um, and, but at, you know, at tier 2 price, because that t league had strange tiering. But anyway, uh, Infernape does literally everything. Uh, literally everything. Uh, I can't think of something it cannot do. It'd be a wall. Except maybe hazard <laughs> removal. That's not true! I am discovering that this thing, if you slap on, like, some defensive investment and slack off, like... It takes hits. I can't reveal. I don't want to reveal anything because, like, because like I'm thinking about using it in the PCL a couple times, but like, it can take some hits. It surprises me every time. That's interesting. Um, I've yeah. You slap on Will O Wisp, slack off. Um, you know, give it maybe either U turn or fire punch or whatever, just for, like some sort of coverage. Um, you know, leftovers plus slack off plus Will O Wisp. You're taking out any physical attacker really. It's kind of disgusting. Um, it does get, and it gets rocks, like, whatever you want it to do. I don't really understand why this thing uh, is tier 1. I think it is a good tier 2 pop. Like, it's a really good tier 2 yeah. mon. I think it's a really low low tier 1 mon if it does get to that in a certain league. But um, league voted, and we decided to make it tier 2 here, and it was taken round 2 un unsurprisingly. I'm not surprised. Uh, that's, a, that's a good value pick. No, no, no. Solid, solid pick. And pairs well with Tapu Koko, aside from their obvious ground weakness that they share, which he will have to patch up as he moves forward in his draft. Um, and you were up next uh, after this Infernape got picked up, and you grabbed Garchomp. Speaking of which, you talked about this a little bit with the Zygarde pick. Uh, really solid Dragon Ground type, but I'll let you go on about it if you'd like. Uh, so, I mean, I think the thing that really appealed to me was that it was it had stat ground and had a really high attack and a little bit above average uh, speed as well. Uh, I was speeding all the, the Pixies, and uh, it's just... Uh, pretty decent defenses as well. Really great HP stat, um, and it's just this is really great. Like I mean, it uh, has a lot of different uh, uh, coverage moves. It's got it's a stealth rock. Um, it can run a defensive. Gets rough skin, um, and yeah, I think it's uh, it's possibly best dragon in draft league format um uh, but i mean obviously, a, a lot, a lot, I, I'm, I'm saying I, that's why i said uh, arguably keyword there was arguably my friend uh, i but, could argue that point for days dude <laughs> well, i mean bring it dude bring your dragon i'll bring my dragon let's 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 go wow my dragon okay. <laughs> um <laughs> Anyway, um, moving right along, we have the Reno Raikou picking up Cresselia as their next pick. So, you see Mega Mawile, you see Cress, you see Trick Room. I mean, there's really no other thing um, that this Cresselia would be able to do. I mean, obviously it does its own thing, but um, also that base 50 speed is completely incorrect. It is base 80. Um, another base 80 mod that does not run speed investment usually. Um, but it is... Uh, incredibly good at, at setting up Trick Room, uh, incredibly interesting coverage moves, things like Icy Wind for more speed support, uh, gives access to, uh, 
I don't think it gets any aromatherapy or anything, but it does get refreshed, which is super annoying. Uh, and then you can run Calm Mind, Substitute, Stored Power, all those other things that Cresselia loves to do. Um, you know, Moonblast, Moonlight, stupid s s Lunar Duck. Uh, but anyway, really solid mod, pairs super well with Mega Mawile. Uh, Crest is actually, I was corrected, base 85, not base 80. So that shows how much it actually doesn't run in regular... It usually runs minus speed nature if it's setting up Trick Room, so... There you go, to underspeed those base 80s that it always outspeeds naturally. Um, but Cresselia, solid mon, uh, Levitate, super useful ability to pair with Mega Mawile since it is immune to the ground type that Mega Mawile is weak to, and Mega Mawile is uh, resisting to the dark type that Cresselia is weak to, things like that, and the bug type as well, so very good pairing so far for our reigning champion from the Summer League. The next pick is going to be by the British Brooksish. And that is going to be Mega Venusaur. Now this team looking awful similar to something that I've drafted in the past in terms of TBL Season 2. I actually had both of these mons on that team uh, and made finals. So hard to say that David is doing a poor job drafting when it looks like a team I've drafted before. Uh, ridiculous attack, not attack, but ridiculous defenses um, and base 100 or better in 4 of its 6 stats. Um, the others being speed, which it does not care about, and HP, which it does care about, but not that much. Synthesis, Leech Seed, Poison, uh, you know, Poison Typing, and Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, access to uh, Knock Off Earthquake. You can run all sorts of crazy things with this. Uh, Sleep Powder if you really want to. Grassy Terrain if you really want to. Um, you know, however you want to run this Mega Venusaur, it's going to do its job very, very well. I thoroughly enjoy using Mega Venusaur. It is honestly my favorite Mega in format, and I think that it is a pretty solid round to pick up for David here uh, in the, the middle of round two, uh, moving forward. Following that, we have the Trenton Thunderous picking up Mamoswine in near the end here in round two. Now, Playmaker, if you have anything you want to say about Mamoswine. Um, well, this thing is uh it's really good um you know uh, it can be uh you can run it defensively or you can even just defensive uh, it's really great with the choice scarf um it's uh it's dual typings are such that it like it hits a lot of things super effectively um i think because i think ice most things super effectively and then uh and then earthquake just cleans up the rest for the most part um and then what else it also gets ice shard priority and um uh, yeah i mean i think it's uh it's it's pretty good also it gets thick, it has thick bat as an ability which is yeah, absolutely useful uh this thing does really well to give him a stealth rocker um Really strong physical attacker where Mega Latias gave him that special attacker. So his team is shaping up to be real scary already. Some teams are really starting to come together very early on in this draft. Um, following that up, we do have Mega Low Punny, uh, which was drafted near the very end of round two, which is very surprising to me that this thing lasted this long uh, in the draft. But Zygarde 50% and Mega Low Punny is a pain to have to deal with. Uh, breaking that down is going to be difficult. Uh, base 135 speed and 136 attack. Uh, scrappy, so it's going to be able to hit your ghost types with whatever, so it can pretty freely spam high jump kick without worrying about it too much, aside from obvious protecting or uh, little things like that. Uh, drain punch for its own form of recovery. Crazy coverage moves. Doesn't get U-turn, which I still think it should get U-turn, um, but that is what it is, and I'm not going to complain too much about it. Um... And it does get some really weird moves. Uh, I believe it gets Heal Bell. It definitely gets Work Up. Uh, quick Attack is off and run. Fake Out, obviously. Um, and then Stab Return from base 136 attack is going to hurt. So that is how we're going to talk about Mega Low Pony. Next up, and finally, uh, for this round two, is going to be Mega Scizor, um, which is going to pair incredibly well with Protean Greninja since... Fire is one of the types Greninja can switch into without worrying too much about it. And Scissor can come in on pretty much anything that Greninja would fear. Um, whether it's a bug move, whether it's a fighting move, whether it's a uh, electric move, Scissor just doesn't really care. So, 
Playmaker, do you want to say anything about Mega Scizor? Um, I think this is definitely one of the the better Megas in the format. Uh, it's just like it's got incredible uh, defenses. Uh, and you know, speed stats like. I mean, if you have Bullet Punch, I mean, like, it, like that doesn't really matter uh, for the most part. Yeah, it does yeah. a million different things. Obviously, access to U-turn, defog, um, like you said, bullet punch and priority. Um, yeah, and Alex, if you want to jump in and say something, go for it. Go for it. You are welcome to, to come on stream here. Here, cricket tunes. Hello. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I was just making sure it wasn't here. Okay, so I guess uh, with this one. Um, well, for my draft overall, I really wanted to go with Mons that I hadn't used before, but if you know me, I have used this Mon before. I just wanted to get it out there because it's just it's just really solid. I've used it in past seasons. It's got a pretty surprisingly high defense stat, too, along with its insanely high attack stat. Um, yeah, Bullet Punch is also just a good move because it doesn't, you know, it's just it's Bullet Punch. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it... it it can uh, protein Greninja can switch into fire, like you said, pretty easily for Mega Scizor. And um, my next pick also pairs well with Mega Scizor, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. So yeah, yeah, um, I do think Mega Scizor is a great mod in format, really, really val uh, valuable uh, Mega slot because a lot of times with your Mega slot, you're gonna try to figure out, okay, what mod am I gonna use that actually doesn't lose anything by removing its ability to hold other items. And I think Mega Scizor actually does a very, very good job in that role and gets the right stat boost in order to make it justifiable to give it that Mega instead of something else like a Choice Band, like an Akaberry, something like that, that it would otherwise enjoy holding. So that is going to wrap it up for round two. And I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you last time, Playmaker. So get ready and get used to it. Right. Uh, best pick, worst pick. Oh, so best pick? I think I think I'll give it to uh, to you for getting Celesteela. I know you hate the pick, but I love the pick. I hate the so, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think, hate the mod, not the pick. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, Celesteela is probably the the best value pick. Worst pick? Uh, it's, uh like all these are really good. Um, yeah, every single one of these mods could have gone could have gone round one. Pretty much, and I wouldn't have really batted an eye at it. Um, man, I would probably say I think compared to everything else, Mammoth Swine's probably the most outclassed in this uh, in this round. Uh, so I'll probably go with Mammoth Swine just for that, uh, even though it's like really good. Um, uh, it's a stealth rocker, and it's uh, it's great offensively. It's just it's uh. I don't know. It might be a little too early for it. He might have been able to get it around later, but I don't mean to put. Yeah, I I feel similarly about that. I would probably say the same thing about Mega Aerodactyl. Um, just because taking a tier two Mega this early is a little bit, uh, you know, other people are still taking some some really big tier one threats. Sure. Uh, why did my my music just died? Cut. My music just you cut out as well. What are you doing? All right. Well, I think I'm. I think we're good. Um, start with the music again, and we are gonna jump into round three um, with no more time Sorry, excuse me, one wasted. Second, Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, we are going to start off this round with Gly Score, and Alex said he wants to talk about this one as well. So why don't you come back in, Alex, and hang out with us? One okay. More time. So Gly Score, um, it's a really good mod, and I've always wanted to use it. I never have. Um, so. Uh, I was really looking for like a bulky steel type or ground type as well uh, to kind of cover for the four times weakness to fire that Mega Scizor has. And uh, I was talking to Kohanks and he kind of helped me draft this team a little bit, so shout outs to him. Uh, and he said, well, Gliscor, I'm like, really? That isn't taken yet? He's like, yeah, it somehow made it to round three. So I'm like, well, okay, that that's perfect. I drafted Gliscor and um, it helps so that uh, Mons just can't run HP fire every week. and. Uh, yeah, that, that's, it's Glide Score. It's a really good mod, really bulky, uh, just does a lot, so yeah. Oh yeah, and like we said before, uh, it does get access to all four of those really, really solid moves. 
um, which are Toxic, Knockoff, Some Sort of Momentum, and uh, Removal, or Stealth Rocks, and it gets Removal, which is additional to that. Um, and it gets just like Passive Recovery, it's a Status Absorber, which is always good. You can't just spam Will-O-Wisp against Mega Scizor, um, and it's actually Gliscor, since this thing is going to have its Toxic Orb up almost every week. Although, I have run Gliscor before, and I have often decided not to run Toxic Orb in favor of something else. Um, you know, this thing actually, with base 95 speed, does benefit from things like a Choice Scarf set. It does love actually having access to some other move, um, or something like a Choice Band, or, um, Berry, like a Yachi Berry or something. So, you can give this thing a couple of different options, and without just getting it locked into Poison Heal, but that is going to be its bread and butter every week for the most part. Um, and I think it does a very good job in that role, despite being, uh, a one-item pony, it is far from a one-trick pony. Uh, and its moves are very versatile. And Stab Earthquake, I mean, it's still Stab Earthquake. I don't care if this thing's flying, it is still a Stab Earthquake uh, from anything, which is going to hurt your team if you're not prepared for it. So following this up, we have the Missouri Magnazones picking up Reuniclus. Now, you had this in Season 3, Playmaker, so why don't you talk about it a little bit? Oh, man. Uh... Albus Tormentor? You have some munchies over there? Sorry? You have some munchies over there? Are there these, uh... Snickerdoodle cookies. Dude, I'm so jealous. Yeah, they're from Lenny and Larry's. It's... Uh, I don't even know what that is, but I'm you still should, jealous. You should, you should uh, get in on this, dude. They're, like, really good. Like, my first time I'm, I'm trying these, weird. and I've, like, basically finished the entire bag. I have one cookie left. But, <laughs> but I only have one cookie left, so... Alright, I won't, I won't interrupt you again. Why don't you Why don't you give us a little <laughs> bit more about... So, yes. Obelisk so, Yes, this here. is, um... Obelisk the Tormentor, uh, just because uh, I think it, it tied for the league le lead in kills last season or something like that. I can't remember, but uh, this this thing was just phenomenal for me. Um, you know, even though people knew what it wanted to do, uh, it was just really hard to game plan against. And like, I actually wanted to to get this thing again for the season, but um, dang, like. Nick went in hard at, at pick number three for this. Like, I got this, like, I think round nine or ten last season. And so I was like, okay, well, people don't really, like, even think about Reuniclus uh, for the most part. But then, like, and then I was heartbroken. Uh, and this thing, uh, especially if you run it with a bold nature, you could just, like, um, get mines it up and it just becomes really difficult to break like this thing was my like go-to wall for a good part of the season so yeah so this thing absolutely ridiculously good mine um and i think pairing it with zygarde and megalopony is just absurd um this team honestly one of the scariest teams in this in this draft so far up through round three Next up, we have the Trenton Thunderous and Brendan picking up Rotom Wash, which is somehow the, the first Rotom form taken and is still available here in the middle of round three, which is absolutely crazy to me. Um, it's proven itself. There's honestly not more that you can say about Rotom Wash than things that have already been said before. It's such a fun mon to use. I loved Rotom Heat when I used it in the IBL. I loved Rotom Frost when I used it in the TTM Summer Showdown. Um... You know, like I, or the Surge Bracket, or whatever that was. Um, I love Rotom, honestly. All the forms do such fun things. Um, and they got access to Defog and Ultra Ultra Moon, which everyone knows by now. It feels like it's been the case forever, but it's honestly only been the case for like a year. Um, Volt Switch, Hydro Pump. This thing gets Sucker Punch, it gets Pain Split, it gets Trick, it gets all sorts of crazy things. Will O Wisp, obviously. The Rotoms are one of the few mons, fun fact, to be able to get access to. Um, all three of the major status moves that are used, obviously Sleep is the fourth and like quaternary status, sure. but in terms of Toxic, Will-O-Wisp, and th uh, Paralysis and Thunder Wave, this thing does get access to all three of those in status moves, which is really, really cool. Um, so you can really run it however you need it for that week. You need Speed Control, run Thunder Wave. You need some Physical Attacker to be handled, run Will-O-Wisp. Uh, you just want General Damage, run Toxic, however you want to run it. Um, and then run Hex, because why not? You know, you're running status anyway. So... Honestly, not more to say about Rotom Wash than things that have already been said. Great pick, great mod. Um, has proven itself time and time again in League format. 
And we'll get back to David, who is now going to grab Excadrill. Playmaker, I know you love this Pokemon, so why don't I give you the chance to talk Man, about it? Um... <laughs> Gosh, where do I even start, dude? Um... I think, uh... The thing is that... Like, it can, uh... It's a good stealth rocker or whatever. It's like, well, I'd rather have something that's, uh... Bulkier that can do stealth rock, like... Archomp's better than this thing, uh, in terms of being a stealth rocker. Uh, like, the thing is, like, it's, it's defenses are absolute crap. Uh, it takes a lot of, uh, support to get it set up. Like, base 88 speed, uh, is underspeeding a lot of things. Like, if it's, uh, like, you can either, like, if you go Mold Breaker, you lose that on the Sand Rush. And then... Alright, so... <laughs> So let me. Let, I'll, I'll actually give this yeah, thing. Yeah, you, you, I'm to sorry, shine. dude. I'm sorry, dude. Um, it, it's all. It's all. You <laughs> go for it. I think Extra Drill's got a really cool design, um, and I drafted it in the GBA D League, and actually enjoyed using it for the most part. I did drop it eventually, but in terms of being a spinner that quad resists rocks, which is a pretty unique niche, that it's a. Uh, that it, that it holds, um, and then really strong base 135 attack, and you get it in sand. It does have an effective what, like base 176 speed, so that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and now David's team, like I said, is looking real similar to teams that I feel like I've drafted before, so we'll keep looking at it as it continues, but um, he is using mods that I like, so it's hard to say anything like terribly bad about it, you know? Um, but it is actually a really solid mod with a pretty good HP stat. The real risk you run with, with Excadrill is it's base 110 HP, seems really solid, but it's not going to be a wall, it's not very bulky. I'd rather that be in defense, because honestly, I've seen this thing be Drain Punch fodder more times than any other Pokemon that like fully recovers your opponent because of its really high base HP stat. <laughs> um, and because it doesn't resist any of the real like uh, recovery moves outside of like Draining Kiss, um, you know, Giga Drain still doing a decent amount of damage. Drain Punch is doing obviously Drain Punch is basically one hit KOing any Exu Drill. So I've seen this thing become Drain Punch fodder or like recovery fodder in terms of moves like that more than I care to admit. Um, so that is something to watch out for. Um, but he does have Mega Venusaur, which is one of the best Leech Seeders in format. Although I do have one of the best counters to Exu Drill in Celesteela, which can then just kind of turn around and Leech Seed this thing back. So there you go. who knows? Um, Exu Drill, solid mon. It's it usually goes around here on a team that's looking for it, so I can't say anything bad about I it. But bad about I know it. you, I know you don't love it, Playmaker. So you said a lot of bad things about oh it. Oh my gosh, I I, I <laughs> write a whole thesis about how bad Excadrill is, but uh, <laughs> but I think we can. Go so on. anyway, we're gonna move yeah. we're gonna move right along to Coinx's pick uh, and the next grab, which is Zapdos, which is a mon again. I was looking at, um, but decided not to take so far, and he is going to grab it. Here in round three, I think that's great value for Zapdos. Uh, do you have anything you want to say about it? Uh, yeah, uh, I definitely loved using this thing. Uh, just um, like I didn't really like before I was into the whole draft league uh, thing. I would I would just pretty much do street battles and stuff, and just really one of those. Uh, it was it's it's probably the best. Or one of the best special defensive walls that I've used that and Tyranitar, uh, but it can take just about any hit, any single hit for sure. Um, and, and it's another thing. I mean, just looking at this team comp, it's another thing that's immune to ground for Mega Mawile. Reliable recovery, like Cresselia, um, in terms of Roost, it gets access to Thunder Wave. Or static if you really just don't want to run Thunder Wave but still want a 30% chance to paralyze something that makes contact with you if you want to run a physically defensive Zapdos. I mean, this thing is stupidly strong. It's really good. And Volt Switch, obviously, Heat Wave as good coverage. Um, Drill Peck if you want to run Mixed. Like, I honestly love Zapdos. I've never drafted it, but I think it's a really cool mod that, uh, that does a lot of jobs uh, in format. So, I think round three is honestly incredible value for Zapdos. And then it's you, Playmaker, so why don't you jump in with your round oh, three hold pickup, on. Wait, 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 is... wait, wait, wait. Koenx wanted to talk. Did he want to talk? 
Where you say that? saying in, in this uh, in this chat here, he's like that feeling oh. when you're in call, but they don't ask you to talk about your own mom. Oh, sorry, dude. I mean, Jump no, y'all y'all already covered it now. I'll I'll just talk on the next one. It's cool. I'm sorry, dude. I oh, I, I, I literally I mean, just saw this yeah. like as we were like talking. That's my fault, dude. Fault, I guess. Well, sorry that I totally missed it. Um, but I remember on the the wrap rounder. I probably won't, but remind me. Okay. Um. Yeah, I guess it's because, like, so, we hadn't asked him to talk this whole time on. It just kind of was like, he yeah. came in, but. Yeah. He's got, he's got a couple more ridiculous mods yeah. coming up, so. Yeah, plenty of time. Not gonna worry, not gonna worry too much about him missing out on Zapdos, but your turn. I'm gonna let you take over for a little bit and talk about Mimikyu, um, since this mod is super fun. Oh my gosh, this thing, I, I, I just want to say, like, this thing has the best ability in the game with Disguise. Just because, like, if you feel like you're getting pressured by uh, your opponent and that has got like a plus six and whatever stat, like offensively, and like it just outspeeds the rest of your team. And then you have this thing in the back and you're like, okay, I, th I can kill this thing if I just get one hit off it. And you get that hit and then you're good. And then uh, it's an amazing Z user. Um, it's this thing actually saved me in the semifinal match of TBL season three against Hef. It's uh, like just because like Hef had gotten sticky webs up, and then I was just relying on this thing to like get shadow sneaks off and just to like wall a uh, a ditto that had transformed into my Snorlax, and thing just like absolutely came in clutch for me uh, and season three and I was just like I just cannot let anyone else get this thing because this thing has like this thing has been so clutch for me so yeah so I mean I love Mimikyu great mon great typing spin blocker as well mm -hmm. um, so nothing bad to say about it and we're gonna move right on to the FC Mighty N is picking up Scizor regular Scizor this time Going one round after Mega Scizor. I, again, Edgequake is is real against this team right now. Scizor obviously not weak to either, but also doesn't resist either of them. As right. your Steel type not resisting uh, Rock is a risk, but Scizor, like I was mentioning earlier, does get a lot of cool item options in terms of scarves, bands, Aka berries. Uh, you can run some sort of recovery like Citrus Berry, Lumberry, whatever you really want. This thing can accomplish. Assault Vest Scizor is definitely real. Gives him a Defogger, um, which is actually super useful. Gives him a Swords Dance, Setup Sweeper. Um, and then Roost is just generally useful on anything that gets it. So pretty, uh, pretty solid Mon in terms of what its versatility and usefulness is. Um, do you have anything else you want? Um to talk about this team well this i've uh like this thing i mean i was de debating between this and mimikyu for my pick uh and like like as a as a tier two pick this thing is solid value um and it does just about everything that uh mega scissor does except for the stat boosts that uh uh what you call that mega scissor has that this thing doesn't have but even then like this thing is very intimidating. Uh, it also gets baton pass as well, and lee and sword stance. Yep, no agility passing this. Oh, one there isn't. Oh, sweet. Sword stance well, passing. Uh, that's that's a relief. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no speed passing. But, okay. Um, yeah, it's a tier two, which it switched to this this season. I think this is the right time for Scizor to go. Absolutely. Next up, we have the St. Louis Charizards picking up Jolteon, uh, which. When you pair it with Milotic, uh, two mons that are immune to electric staring you down with a Milotic is not what you want to see on your screen. Um, so Jolteon, absolutely phenomenal. I love this thing. Base 130 speed, speed tying it with Coco, Aerodactyl, Crobat, all those guys in that really cool speed tier. Base 110 special attack, it actually does hit really hard. You can run specs in this thing a lot. And in fact, you can probably run specs modest a lot. And if you're really not feeling specs and you don't want to lock it into a scarf, just run Quick Feet. Um, and this thing will suddenly have a free scarf. Yeah, it takes the burn damage, but how much does Jolteon really care? Um, and if he gets a Wish Passer later, then he'll be set with Jolteon. And 
Jolteon learns Wish, so recovery. Um, yeah, those base 65 HP wishes are probably not what you're looking for. So, um, but I've done it. I've run Wish Jolteon before. It's real. Um, so really solid team shaping up here. Some of the mods that I just enjoy using and love to see on my screen. Uh, and next up is T-Shed, who I believe at this point in the street, in the, in the draft was starting to get really frustrated, um, with just the way it was going. He was getting sniped literally left and right. Um, so he grabs Bisharp, um, which is actually a mod I really like and think has a lot of versatility, um, and pairs really well with Mew just because of its resistances. But, uh, what do you think here? Playmaker, any thoughts? Um, well, I, it's definitely uh, an anti-defog, anti-intimidate Pokemon that's... Uh, uh, yes, Rock Polish, Knock Off, Sucker Punch, um, Iron Head. Uh, it can be a really good Z user as well. Mm -hmm. um, man, I, it's, it's also got pretty good typing. Um, I mean, besides the time for weakness to fighting, but... Um, I mean, he's got Mew in the back, so that's not a huge yeah, that's deal. that's true. Um, and then he's got three mons that learn Stealth Rock, two mons that learn Defog. Like, he's got options right now for, like, already how he wants to play this. In terms of just a Steel-type, I love Bisharp. Um, it hits like a truck um, and is a super fun to use. Obviously, Defiant, incredible ability. It really it disincentivizes your opponent from using Sticky Webs, Defog, Intimidate, you know, whatever you want to do to it. Sometimes you hit Moonblast, you get that special attack drop, suddenly you're staring down a plus two Bisharp, and you're like, well, uh, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, and we are here. So that's going to be Bisharp, and next up we have the Splurge Bracknell Beedrills picking up Tangrowth on this disgusting team. Like I said, I faced this team week one, and I am not excited. Um, so, Playmaker, thoughts on Tangrowth here? Um, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... It's really fat. See that it's really fat just by looking at it. Uh, AV Tangrowth is uh, amazing. It's hard to. Annoying. Uh, he's got. He's only got bulky Pokemon as it is, and. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't get it better. Does... It doesn't get better. Oh my god, it does not. Uh, okay. Run, yeah, you well, can run powers. Yeah, I've, been, I've been prepping for this team for like a week, so. You can run Leech Seed on it. It gets Knock Off. Yeah, Knock Off, Earthquake, Rock Slide. Team Power. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this thing. <laughs> no one, get, no, no one do it. This thing is going to get an like, issue Power Boost on you, like, tomorrow. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. If he runs Ancient Power, he's. It, this thing becomes unbreakable at that point. Like, there's nothing you can do to stop a Tangrowth that has an Ancient Power Boost. Green Grace, um, um, Regenerator, or Tangrowth right here. <laughs> Uh, and so next up is my pick, and here in round three, I am actually going to grab Azelf. Um, so I have decided that I'm not going to draft anything on the ground. Um, that's not true, but it is so far true. Um, this thing, I've never used it. I honestly wasn't even looking at it at all until right before my pick. And I was like, wait a minute, what does it do? And then I looked, I was like, base 125 attack, base 125 special attack, base 115 speed... U-turn, explosion, stealth rocks, ridiculous coverage on both sides. Like, sure, why not? Let's see what happens if I draft Azelf that I've never not. It's not even like I haven't. It's not. It's not even that I've never drafted it. It's that I've never even noticed it. Um, and so like I just am so excited to use this thing. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, its resistances, uh, obviously to ground like everything else on my team, but specifically to fighting really helps out Hydreigon. Um, it's not going to be used super defensively. Obviously, that's not possible. Uh, it's it's an Azelf, but it is a really, really good offensive pivot. Um, and, you know, if we look back at Gen 4 meta, it's one of the best lead mons in the format. So, uh, there we go. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, do you know anything more about Azelf? I honestly don't know how to, how to speak um, to this a, thing. A lot of people just, like, love to run Explosion Azelf with Focus Ash. Uh, oh, it's the explosion as if someone just literally just commented it like as soon as I was talking about explosion. Um, but yeah, that and it gets U turn, knock off. Uh, so I mean, yeah, you can run it as either physical or special. Um, I, it's 
it's kind of uh i think it, it's right up your alley in that it's it's very techy like i think it also gets flamethrower as well and yeah it seems like it's it's just a slightly less variety based mew but with better offensive stats that's like kind of how i was looking at it uh so i'm excited to use as up i think it'll be really interesting um, and finally for this round, we do have Manbird picking up Superior, uh, which is something he had said that he wanted to use or to talk about himself. So I will not take away his thunder um, and let him talk about Superior here at the end of round three if he'd like to. Okay, so uh, Superior. First of all, I just got to say, favorite starter of all time, simply because one fact, one fact right here, it's the cute, snacky boy we've always needed as a starter. I mean, just looking at it, it's so regal, and it just makes you want to give it all the head pats. Just want to boop it. <laughs> but uh, moving on to what this thing can actually do in battle, besides its aesthetically pleasing design and all that, um, 113 speed, uh, another super fast monster in my team. I think you're noticing the pattern by now. Uh, all three of my monsters so far are over base 100, and specifically 110 or over. Uh, Sure, it's only got 75 special attack, but if this thing gets going with contrary leaf storms, you don't have a switch in. Uh, running some calcs uh, against a Mega Mawile, it's uh, superior. Two hit KOs on a resisted hit with leaf storm. That insane if this thing can get going with it. Uh, it's not got the best coverage, but it's a good sub uh, It gets Dragon Pulse. Uh, it has good defenses for a grass type it's got that 95 in each step um it can if you want to run a uh, coil it gets that and you can run a uh, red oh and uh, heavy just mentioned it gets access to outrage <laughs> it's a really good mon uh it's kind of one dimensional but at the same time it's just such a beautiful boy that i mean i couldn't pass it up yeah, I drafted Superior in the PCL, and I'm actually having a lot of fun with it this season. Um, fun is not translating itself into success, but it's still a good mod, and I really enjoy it. So, uh, this team, very, very fast. Very different look from some of the other teams, and some of the other Pokemon this round in the best transition. You guys see my professionalism right there at work as we uh, work our way into this post-round recap slide. Um... This is where the draft, in my opinion, starts getting interesting. Any draft, the first two rounds, first three rounds are fairly similar. And then it's where the things pick up and Pokemon start getting drafted that you're just like, yo, that's out of left field, or yo, that was the exact mod I needed. I have no replacement for it, and I just got sniped so hard. Um, so, Playmaker, we're back to you. Oh, man. Best pick, worst pick? Um, man, best pick? Besides my Mimikyu, um, uh, well, worst pick is pretty easy. Uh, I, I hate extra girl, so <laughs> so yeah, so that's the worst pick. So best Ooh, pick two two out of first three rounds. David gets worst pick. For, for yeah, sorry, dude. Here. Sorry, dude, but like everyone knows that I hate extra girl. Uh, so yes, everyone does know that know that i if for all of you guys watching who don't know me i hate extra girl um that's how i'm gonna introduce myself from now on in all my videos and like hi my name is playmaker and i hate extra girl okay and then best pick i mean like i'm like between like, besides mimikyu like i'm between uh um zapdos and uh and tangrowth yeah, I do think those are two of the best picks here. Um, really, really do like Zapdos in terms of the value it gets in round three. Um, I also like the tier two Scizor going in round three. I honestly think that's uh, that's a really solid. I saw this well. very true. So another another decent round of picks. Honestly, hard to say what is poor when everything is scary um, and everything has decent matchups against everything else. You know. Um, but let's jump into round four. We have been streaming for an hour and a half, and we're three rounds in, so slower than I want it to be. But we're going to jump into round four right here, and we are going to start it off with Alolan Muck. Uh, this thing, absolutely terrifying. A lot slower than Superior, Torrenty, and Mega Gallade, but 
knockoff, stab, gunk shot. This thing gets uh, gluttony. Super interesting mod. So, yeah. I mean, there's, again, what are you going to say? What, like, it's a low-end muck. It's shown to be incredibly good in singles and doubles. If Manbird wants to jump in and say anything specific about it, he's welcome to. Uh, I would. This is he, my favorite poison in the entire game. This is an asshat, and anyone who drafts uh, those uh, gang... Uh, I think you're cutting yeah, me out is. a little bit, so... Not sure what's going on. Probably my wife. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, I, heard, I can't really hear. All I heard was that Toxpex uh, is an ass hat. That's all I heard. Uh, I mean, Toxpex has an ass hat on. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'm sorry, man, bird, that that didn't quite work the way that uh, we had hoped it would. But we'll let you get back on later for another pick and see how that that ends up going. But I do think. Alolan Muck is an amazing mod and deserves to have uh, its time in the spotlight right there. Um, for fourth round, Alolan Muck, pretty solid time to grab it as well. Next up, I grabbed Don Fan. I decided finally to pick something up that was actually going to be on the ground and why not get one of the most reliable stealth rockers in the game uh, to pair with Azelf as another stealth rocker. This thing, priority in Ice Shard, Stab Earthquake, gets crazy coverage moves that I just like never really expected to see. Um, obviously knockoff is super nice on this thing. Play rough is super cool. Um, and then sturdy is an incredibly useful ability. Um, and hey, mama. just love, love the idea of Don fan in this format. I've never used one before. Um, in fact, nothing on this team so far have I ever drafted before, which I'm really excited for, but, uh, playmaker, do you have anything you, oh, he just, di he just dipped. He's not even call anymore. All right. So it's just me now. Um, so yeah, stealth rocks, knockoff. I mean, what else is there to say? It's Don Fan, it's got Sturdy, and I'm really excited to use it this season. And it gave me priority, which I was sort of missing with my first three mods, um, and I really definitely uh, wanted to make sure I covered that throughout the next few picks. So you're gonna see me grab some stuff that can have a little bit more utility in that sense. Um, slowing it down a little bit past the Celesteel at base speed of 61 down to 50, and a uh, really strong defensive wall uh, where Celesteel is a bit more mixed, so. That's what I decide to go with here. Next up, we are gonna get Splurge on the... Oh, he's not gonna be on call. He's, he's gone too. Everyone's leaving me. I'm just a little alone now. Um, but we are gonna rock out with the slow bro pick. So Regenerator Core coming out. Uh, this team, like I said, it doesn't get better. It just gets worse. This team gets harder and harder to break. Um, it gets more and more things that are more sorry. and more annoying. I, uh, um, sorry, my mom was calling me, so I had to... I didn't want to, I didn't want to let you guys, let you guys talk to my mom, and then. No worries, dude. Um, Canadian Zudamon, I actually, <laughs> I don't know if this is a correction or not, um, I drafted Don Fan in the surge bracket, the TTM surge bracket, um, but I don't know if that counts as, like, a draft league, uh, but I, I used it there, I guess. I mean, I've used Don Fan in other places, um, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I've i looked at this team for a week, and I'm frustrated by it. So, Playmaker, talk about Slowbro. Uh, Slowbro's my bro, dude. We go way back. But, uh, no, I mean, this thing's, uh, this thing's really good, especially as a regenerator. Yeah, I mean, I think he needs at least uh, four more regenerator Pokemon just to, like, fill out his uh, regenerator core. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's shaping up pretty nicely. Uh, this thing's really fat defensively. Really, just have to like try to hit it on the special defensive side to just even like, uh, like whittle this thing down, um, and then or just try to toxic it if you can. Uh, I mean, those are my suggestions on how to take down a slowbro. But this thing also gets trick room, and his team is is slow enough to even as well, which is. Another thing to consider, and um, and yeah, it also gets flamethrower, which is also really interesting. Uh, yeah, so you uh, moving right along. <laughs> That's my final word on slogan. <laughs> uh, we got the we got T Shen picking up Rabombi uh, here in round four. 
I have drafted Rabombi twice, and I have fallen in love with this thing as a sticky webber. Uh, because it doesn't have to have sticky webs in order to apply pressure because you're like, oh, I don't want to slow you down this week. I'm just going to quiver dance instead. Or like, oh, I don't even need to quiver dance. I'm just going to run scarf. Like this thing does it all and it does it well. Um, and then it's two stabs and bug buzz and moon blast are amazing. And honestly, I know it has base 55 attack. I know you're not going to be using a frame sword damage, but you turn from base 124 speed, something that forces switches like as much as Rubombi does love it. Love it, love it, love it. Rubombi is amazing. Uh, it does such a cool thing. Um, and yeah, I really, I really thought that it was just, it's a great pickup. Um, Tishan's team actually looking super fun to use, not gonna lie. Um, gives him another thing to switch in with that's quad resistant to fighting type moves. Um, another rock weakness, but he has three mons now that have defog, including Rabombi, Mega Aerodactyl, and Mew, so I wouldn't worry too much about rocks. Um, and yeah, I don't think there's anything more to say about this unless you have anything you want to add to that. Uh, I think you covered it just about everything. I think we can move on. Yeah, so we're going to jump into the next mon, Hef, picking up Alolan Ninetales. Uh, his team looking scary and now looking scary behind an Aurora Veil. Um, you want to talk about this one? I have some feelings and thoughts about this one, but I, I kind of want to hear what you have to say. Oh, I had this thing in Season 3, and everybody was trying to credit this thing for my success in Season 3. And I mean, it did have a role, but everyone also just brought Brick Break or Defog as well. So, like, it's not like it's, you know, a little Nine Tails makes every team broken. I mean, there are ways to prep around it. Um, but, you know, this thing also gets uh, Encore and... Heal Bell and just uh, I mean in addition to like Freeze Dry and uh, and Moon Blast and um, and all these other sort of things I've seen A Drive run uh, run Scarf a little Nine Tails before which is did I mention Hypnosis or not I can't remember but um, uh, I don't know yeah it's got a, it's got a lot of things going for it um, yeah. And I mean, everyone preps for it to bring Veil, and if it just doesn't bring Veil, then you just prep for something that is completely irrelevant. Um, and that doesn't mean Veil is bad. You know, they, you take down their Brick Breaker, and suddenly now there's an eight-turn Aurora Veil sitting on the field, and you, how do you wait eight turns to start attacking again, you know? Yep. Uh, so, Aurora, Alola Ninetales, really solid mon. Uh, round four is about the right time for it, in my opinion. Um, maybe, arguably, one one round early, but if he waited, he may not have gotten it back. Yeah, so, that's true. Um, I think that was a great pickup for Hef in this case. Fitz, I mean, you put a Veil in front of Milotic. Let's just, like, sit down for a second and all realize that he can do that. Um, which is absolutely a gross. Just, just, just gross. Just gross. It's gross. Anyway, next up, we've got Hydra picking up Kafagrigus here in round four. So, um, Bulk wall i mean this thing uh, i've used it and i love it but i hate facing it <laughs> honestly it's got base 145 defense i get that it's got base 105 speed or special special defense and it's got trick room to handle its speed it's got pain split it's got will-o-wisp it's got all sorts of cool things nasty plot cool coverage moves and like psychic knockoff whatever but honestly the most underrated thing about kofagrigus is that mummy is probably the most underrated ability in draft format. That's true. Uh, especially when you're going up against things like Megalopony and things that have uh, have Tough Claws or um, or Strong Jaw or any any of these uh, moves that boost, or sorry, any of these abilities that boost uh, attack or like huge power as well. Uh, so it can nullify all those different abilities. Uh, and then, um, and then, yeah, this thing also can uh, combine sweep as well. Thing to uh, oh, yeah. take into consideration, especially uh, under Trick Room, because not many things will outspeed it. Uh, For sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, again, I do believe Kafagrigus is a later round pick in general, but I also am not going to fault someone taking a round four. Um, yeah, I, th I think. I think it's, this thing it's definitely good value for a tier four, especially when you consider all the other things that are in tier four. I'm not that. Um, but... Mummy would stop U-turn regenerator health gain. Yes, it would. So, 
Next up, we have your pick, uh, which is Volcarona. So you wanna you wanna talk about it? Yeah. So um, this is uh, definitely one of my favorite um, fire types in the in the game. Just, like it has a very good uh, good move pool. Um, you know, and then fiery dance is like most underrated moves I think in in the game, just because you can get. A, uh, um, a special attack boost in addition to like all the crew dances you've already set up and then this thing just becomes more formidable and can just sweep you in a heartbeat um, I know it's weak to rocks um, I mean that's just a small price to pay for absolute power so I'm cool with it well hopefully you get some sort of removal later because right now <laughs> it's it's gonna it's gonna require it yeah uh, <laughs> um, and next up is Koenix picking up Crocodile for this absolutely disgusting team finally getting something that is run with some sort of speed investment on it um, Stealth Rocker knockoff, Stab Knockoff from this thing, Moxie, I had this I mean my first 6-0 sweep was on the back of a Crocodile getting 5 kills with Moxie Knockoff um, so you know what can I say bad about this thing Intimidate Moxie are two of the best abilities in the game um, and then this thing having access to those without taking up a mega slot or anything like that um, and being able to run whatever item you want it to run uh, and then stab earthquake stab knockoff and then other coverage moves like superpower rock slide um, the fangs like all these moves it's so good it's so good um, okay and so, wait yeah, wait I wait think... let, let Cohen speak right we were gonna let Cohen speak here <laughs> thank you for remembering He's not in call anymore, but... Oh, it's where'd you go? This is awkward now. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's muted, though. Okay, my bad, I left. Um, basically, <laughs> my thought process behind this was I saw Volcarona go right before me, and I realized I didn't have any reliable rock setters, so I was like, I want to get one of those right away, so... And I usually always forget to get a dark type, so make sure that. I mean, Crocodile's one of the best rock type. Yeah, rock, rock setting dark types in the game. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to make sure, cross both of us off my list, and uh, did just that. Nice. I loved Crocodile uh, in the IBL, and I think it's going to fit your team very, very well. Your team, real scary right now. Uh, it gives you an option outside of Trick Room, which is super nice. Cool speed tier 92. Yeah. Um, Okay. And then really, really, really solid, just all over the place in terms of coverage and options it's got. So uh, defensive, offensive. I think it'll serve you well. Uh, it seems like Playmaker just got swiped <laughs> by his mom. So I guess we are here now um, and going to keep on trucking. Not going to waste more time here. Moving right along to the British Bruxish. Uh, picking up Chandelure. Uh, this team, a little bit eclectic right now, um, so far, really just trying to find itself, I think. Um, strong physical attacker in Excadrill, strong special attacker in Chandelure, decent wall in Mega Venusaur, and webs in Galvantula, so he's got, like, the makings of a really solid team, and we'll see how he builds it out as he moves forward in this draft. But, uh, I just used Chandelure on that same ICBA Championship team, and it's awesome. Super fun mon. Uh... Absolutely phenomenal special attack. It gets Will O Wisp, which is super fun. Uh, it gets access. I mean, you can run sub call mine. You can run this thing with overheat if you really want it to just like choice specs overheat from this thing's going to kill something. Uh, psychic energy ball. Uh, it gets really crazy coverage moves and then really good hidden powers, obviously, as well. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Base 145 special attack is really, really good. And then base 80 speed. It's a speed tier. He was he's hit with Mega Venusaur, but that doesn't make it a bad speed tier for him to have two of. Since Mega Venusaur is usually run defensive, this thing's usually run with speed investment, so they aren't. It doesn't feel like they're the same speed tier, even though they are. Next up, we're gonna rock out with the Trenton Thunderous, uh, picking up the boy Arcanine as the fire types start to go at this point, um, and he has a real good core going on right now. Defensively, Rotom Wash and Arcanine. Uh, Mold Breaker is really the only thing that's breaking through this team right now. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of trouble really smacking his team uh, hard with anything. Intimidate or Flash Fire, two great things. And if you really are feeling like your prediction game is on point, 
Justified is actually a really good ability for this thing to have because you can then just lose your item on a knockoff, but then just grab that Justified boost and go crazy with it. Arcanine, great on the physical side, great on the special side, really good supporting move pool. So I love this thing. I love the way that it's used in league format. Um, e speed for priority, really, really good mod. So his team's shaping up really solidly so far. Next up, we're going to go on to the Missouri Magazones and Nick picking up Azumarill. Um, so another really offensive mod for this team. Um, loving that Trick Room Azumarill as well. And gives him that switch into something that wants to run a Dragon type move for Zygarde. Uh, gives him that switch in for knockoff on the Reuniclus. Uh, gives him just a really solid mod uh, to hit with priority Aqua Jet. Huge power. Uh, is a, just a, it's always a good ability on anything that gets it. Uh, it makes whatever gets it really, really va viable in any circumstance. Um, and if you want to run Sap Zipper and the Whirlpool uh, Parish Song set, you totally can. Uh, this thing can do it all and do it well. Um, Azumarill, really solid mod. And a really good tier four, well, not tier four, but round four pick uh, here in this league. And wrapping up the first round or fourth round of picks, we have Alex grabbing Alolan Marowak. I know he's still in call if he wants to say anything since I've just been talking sure. for like the last five minutes straight. <laughs> sure thing. Um, so if you want to jump in with Alolan Marowak, you are more than sure welcome thing. to. Um, I mean, I don't have too much to say. I, I just love using this thing. My next two picks are the last two picks uh, for Mons that I've used already. Everything else is uh, new stuff to me, but this one was a really safe pick for me. It hits like a truck and I love using it. Uh, probably my favorite alolan pokemon that came with sun and moon and i don't know why it just it, it's just a really interesting typing fire ghost um and yeah it, it it gets access to a lot of moves and everything and it's just it's just fun to use yeah it's the more physical side of chandelure but it does it in a very different way which is kind of cool um and then rockhead obviously being a really good ability for flare blitz uh double edge gets, stuff like that that it, it, gets, it also gets uh, lightning rod too so you can switch into yeah, anything so you can, it. you can... Or not anything, but lightning uh, types. Electric types, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, yeah, it gives you a different electric type switch in than Gliscor, so like if you're thinking that they're going to run that ice type move, it covers both those options, which is pretty nice. Uh, something like that, so... Really, really solid option right there. And as you can see here at the end of this round, we had a ton of fire types go, um, but a very eclectic round four. Unfortunately, my... Uh, co-commentator has vanished. So Alex, since you're here and you have the wheel pick anyway, why don't you give me your best pick, worst pick of this round? Oh. Uh, since Playmaker is gone. Oh, man. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean... I know you weren't prepared yeah, for this. Yeah, <laughs> I really wasn't. Uh, I love this. Um, that's another mod I've always wanted to use, but I haven't gotten the chance to yet. Um... The one that I think is the worst would be Ribambi. I just, I have no idea what it does, but it just, it, I don't know. It just kind of is underwhelming compared to everything else that I, I see from just taking a glance at this. So, yeah. That's fair. I think Ribambi is really good. I think it is a little bit later round usually, but it is a solid mod. Um, I've enjoyed using it and it just won a championship with me in the ICBA. So, uh, so I can't, you know, I can't knock it too hard. Um, but yeah, so um, here we're going to get into round five. And Alex, if you want to jump in with your uh, first pick that we've discussed briefly earlier, <laughs> uh, in the most uh, loving of terms, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, so Toxapex, um, this thing is just, this thing is just a tank. Uh, I mean, what, what can I really say that hasn't been said already about this thing? <laughs> very, uh, very hated mod. I can completely understand why. And it, 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 the thing is just incredible. I love using it. Uh, yeah, it's just a pain. It's a pain. <laughs> uh, that's about it. <laughs> uh, but it fits your team incredibly well. Uh, does not share a lot of common weaknesses with just about anything. Um, and, you know, if I really want to smack this thing, since you are in my division, uh, with the psych type move, you're going to jump into Proto Greninja. If I want to hit with the ground type move, you're going to go to I mean, you've got options for this thing to be covered in all cases. So, Glyscor, Toxapex is possibly the most gross thing that i've ever seen um oh, i remember the lie. discord freaking out when i picked this and i was surprised that it hadn't yeah, gone it's... early round five and... 
I think the rest of us have made an unspoken agreement to never. Oh grab well, it. I didn't uh, get the not... memo, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should have been a spoken agreement. Yep. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that is going to be Alex's pick here at the beginning of round five, and we will continue on right with right along with this stream. Rotom Heat picked up by Nick, my favorite Rotom form. Uh, I know it's weak to rocks, but otherwise this thing is incredibly cool. Uh, really good stab in overheat. Uh, Thunderbolt Discharge Volt Switch, obviously. Uh, like Rotom Wash and all the other <laughs> Rotom forms, does get all three forms of um, status and fits his team incredibly well. Gives him something off the ground, which is something he was missing before. Uh, a Levitator and some Volt Turn to start here. Um, 86 is a more interesting speed tier in my opinion, uh, but its defenses are really solid and it does get everything back. like Sorry, guys. Not, Thank so. God. I was talking out of my ass for that whole time. I had no idea what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of like, I don't know, like uh, Rabambi and that kind of pissed off a few people. I'm like, oh, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I would have missed. Well, I appreciate you being there, Alex. We jumped through the round, so Alex gave his best worst of round four and we're into round five okay. now is what what we're looking at but uh yeah we're just finishing up rotom heat here if you have anything you want to quickly say otherwise we're just going to jump into the next next pick um i mean you kind of talked about rotoms in general yeah and this thing won a championship with me in the icb i keep saying that but i also am really excited that i won a championship and it's also fun to see that like the, more than half my team has been drafted by round five here you know whereas that's a team i drafted obviously over the course of 11 rounds in that league sure. so uh, one of the mods, one of the mods I would like to point out, and I'm not spoiling anything for anybody, one of the mods that I drafted in that league that has not been drafted yet here is Jirachi, so... Yeah, uh, I was actually thinking of getting wild, Jirachi, so. and... Uh, so speaking of steel types, though, Brendan is going to go ahead and grab Kartana. Really, really good mod. Um, paper thin on the special side, but... Flashfire Arcanine is going to be able to, to stop things. Uh, Rotom Wash is a really good uh, secondary answer. Um, and then Mamoswine Thick Fat obviously doesn't care. Megalodius also resists fire and fighting. Um, so he's got answers. He's got Kartonic like, coverage. And look at that attack stat. Look at it. 181? Yeah, that's what? ridiculous. That's more than like most Megas. Oh, actually, I think all Megas. It's ridiculous. Right? I think it's the highest attack stat of anything that isn't Deoxys attack. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it's wild. It's And then base 131 defense, like, it's it's ridiculous. And then beast boost, obviously, so... Um, but that paper thin yeah, special this... defense, though, that's... Oh, yeah. That's why you gotta run Flamethrower Marowak. Uh, so... Oh, by the way, I am, yeah. I am munching, so I'm just letting you guys know... <laughs> Well, yeah, otherwise, I mean, I know I'm, I'm Otherwise, my mom is gonna yell at me, so it's one thing or the other. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, Kartana's scary. Um, I've had to run some wild tech for it before, um, but it's a really fun mon in league format. So, Brendan grabbing that here. Uh, and next up, we have David grabbing Rotom Cut. So, another Rotom form going here in round five. Um, I've wanted to draft, I actually, this was part of my draft strategy once I was losing out on all of my other electric types, but then I had removed it from my draft strategy before this point, so it wasn't really a snipe. Um, but a dual, a dual grass type alongside Mega Venusaur, but the only weakness that they actually share uh, is um, fire types, since this thing, uh, since Mega Venusaur is not weak to ice and this thing's not, or, uh, not weak to uh, psychic or uh, flying, so not a bad dual grass type in all honesty. Um, but we've already talked about the Rotom, so I don't think I need to, uh, go too much into this Leaf Storm. Just like Overheat, but Grass-type, basically. Um, yeah, I think this thing fits his team well. It's off the ground, which is something he was lacking before. Um, gives him another little pivot, uh, like Galvantula with Volt Switch, so. Decent mod for that, for those purposes. Um, and nobody's gonna comment for the rest of this draft about why Chandelure is spelled wrong. Just let it happen. Um... Chandelure. Next up, it's uh, it's French for a chandelure. It's the French. It's the French version. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, next up, we have Koenigs grabbing Manaphy. Does Koenigs want to talk? Talk playmaker. Yeah. Or Koenigs, if you want to talk. Um, I wasn't planning on drafting this thing this early, but T Shen wanted to fuck with me and say he was going to draft it. So, <laughs> um, 
I picked it here because I was scared oh I didn't want to lose it. Just pairs perfectly with Mega Mawile. Um, that's something something I really like to do in draft is make sure I get one kind of busted Mon and then make sure I get supporting cast on the other side of uh, the attacking. So Mega Mawile physical and Manaphy special. So Mons have a hard time uh, deciding which defense stat they want to invest all the way in. But uh, Tail Glow, Z Rain Dance, like this thing's amazing in my opinion. First time ever using it, so. Some uh, Team BDE betrayal right there by, by Tisha. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next up we have Playmaker's pick. Uh, the Atlanta Raichu's drafting another water type in Mega Gyarados here in round five. Uh, so talk to me talk me through this one here um so you know i was um going on a hyper offensive uh draft spree for whatever reason uh but you know like this thing like it actually has defenses that are like comparable to mega venusaur like it's uh got 109 defense 130 special defense piece that then um which I'm gonna call it, uh, Mega Venusaur. And then uh, this thing gets Dragon Dance, uh, and then it has Intimidate right before it Mega Evolves. Um, and then it gets Mold Breaker after it Mega Evolves. So um, so goodbye to all the Rotom forms that don't have some sort of resist to it. And it's, uh, and then also, like, it gets uh, Ice Fang and Punch Waterfall, Earthquake, just to name a few things. Uh, and then if you want to like take down Cartanas, you can run Flamethrower. Um, uh, and like this thing. Dude, that, yeah. that one season one of the GBA, Flamethrower Gyarados, so. <laughs> it's real. It's happened before. Um, and Hydro with his next pick grabs Shaman. Um, another Pixie going. Another one of those base 100s across the board. Really, really solid Mon. Um. Seed Flare, scary, obviously, but it does so much more than just Seed Flare. It does everything. Um, I honestly don't know what this thing doesn't do. Uh, you can run Seeds, a Leech Seed, you can run Dazzling Gleam, you can run um, Hidden Powers. This thing, uh, just Natural Cure is so annoying because you can't really like wear it down with anything. Uh, rest Natural Cure, obviously, and also an option. Like This thing is out of this world insane, and it's really solid base 100s, can really do just about anything. So. Great grass type, covers his team really well. We start seeing his team take some shape. Um, and I am, you know, he's covering that ground weakness that a lot of his early Pokemon were having, and it's doing a really solid job of it, so. Yeah, it's, uh, I, was, next, I was just gonna say, yeah, um, go just to answer Spud King, we're talking about a the Twitch Battle League art draft, and it's uh, it's basically a league that Goldoa runs, so. Yeah doing here uh yeah sorry i haven't been super paying attention Asshole. to the chat trying to really like focus on the rest of what's going on around me um but yeah it's a uh this is the draft stream for season four of the twitch battle league which is something that i've been running for a few seasons now and this season i'm going to take more effort to make sure that every battle that i do is going to be live streamed here on my twitch channel um and the first one is tomorrow so if you're excited for that Definitely follow, definitely hang out, and I'll be back again in less than 24 hours with Week 1's battle for the Twitch Battle League here uh, on this channel. Right. Next up, we have Hef Nasty picking up Umbreon, um, and I saw someone comparing Mega Gyarados' defenses to Umbreon defenses, but Mega Gyarados doesn't do what Umbreon does, That's quite true. like Umbreon does Very it. Very true. Uh, Umbreon does one thing. <laughs> That is crazy. And it it's... does it so well. Oh, sorry, I was just saying, it is crazy that it's the only one defense point off from Mega Gyarados' defenses. Yeah, it's kind of wild. There's the only thing that I can see Umbreon doing that I, like, that is different is just mean look passing uh, to try to get something in that can handle whatever the threat is. Um, which I think it should do more often than it does because I think it's pretty solid. But Hef grabbing the Jolteon Umbreon core, which is pretty fun. I'm curious to see how he's going to run that one. Um, and this thing has a pretty solid 
Uh, pretty solid move pool, all things considered, but it doesn't really use it. It uses like the same four moves every time, and it still puts in work every single week that it comes. It doesn't come every week, but when it comes, it puts in a lot of work. Um, there's not much to say. It's going to be Toxic Wish, Protect, and Foul Play most of the time. Uh, Curse Bite Umbreon, and... dude. What? Curse Bite Umbreon. Dude, it's real. I've seen Curse Umbreon. It's never actually worked like I think my opponent wanted it to, but it's I've seen it. Uh, I think I ran it. But yeah, so it's a cheeky set one time. I, lo I love I love the uh, set that so I ran against you though, uh, for your uh, EA prep. Uh, the the mean look toxic, like it had no attacking moves, but it was just oh. it was, it oh. was uh, that set was a pain. <laughs> And, oh yeah, my it was, God, it was, that it was me, look toxic, moonlight, and um, yeah, I can't remember. Refresh. Oh, heal bell. Heal bell. Heal bell. <laughs> yeah, it was nasty, it was the worst. dude. I loved it so much. Uh, so next up, we've got Como O, uh, drafted by the Fancy Land Guard Builders, and this thing, I don't think I've ever won against Como O. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why this thing sweeps me every time it comes in the field, but I just never can beat it. Um, Dragon Fighting is a really cool typing. Drain Punch, obviously, for reliable recovery. Uh, Outrage, if you want to run that. Or Special, it's got about equal special, uh, special Attack and Attack. And it's just a really solid Mon all around. Um, really, really good pickup here in Round 5, I think. Um, beats me every time I play it in League format, so... Yeah, uh, Clangor Soul Police is banned, just for the record. Um... Yeah, no Omni boosting Z moves. Yes. Um, but yeah, this thing. Um, so, yeah. so next up, oh yeah, sorry, good. It's just, uh, it's just pretty nasty. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, next up, we've got Incineroar, picked up by Splurge. Sorry, I just like panicked for a second there and just like shut yeah. up for a sec. Um, Incineroar is a menace. Uh, it is so good once it got Intimidate unlocked. Uh, U-turn, super useful on a Mon that is this, uh, offensively oriented where it can just do almost anything. Fire Dark type is absolutely fantastic, um, since it's gonna resist a lot of common options, um, and Intimidate allows it to come in on something and still take an EQ and be okay, um, and I don't know, this thing resists pretty much every single, like, priority move outside of, outside of Mach Punch and... I guess quick attack if you really want to count it. Uh, since it's resisting your sucker punches, it's resisting your shadow sneaks, it's resisting your bullet punches. Um, you know all those like little things. Yeah, Aqua Jet exists and stuff, but it's pretty wild that like it does. It does have a really really solid typing. So yeah, no, it's, it's it's definitely really uh, good, and I think just turns like really awesome. So yeah, I, I, I do like Incineroar. Quite a bit. Um, I've never had a chance to draft one, but I, I really want to someday. Use it in Smash, though. Next up. If you want. What? Smash, though, if you want. I, I still didn't. said so you can use it in Smash if you want. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you said you could change the matchup, and I was like, <laughs> It's like, uh, well, technically, I have the League Commissioner, so I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, if, I don't know if people really trust me if I'd start doing that, just like for funsies, but. Uh, yeah, so anyway, my pick was next, and I grabbed Togekiss here because I decided Donphan was plenty of things that were touching the ground, and we're going to go right back to flying types um, and levitators on this team because who wants to be hit by Earthquake ever? Um, but no, Togekiss gives me that uh, fairy type that I was missing and completes my uh, Steel Dragon Fairy. Gives me Serene Grace, which I had Jirachi, and I loved it, so might as well try it with Togekiss, see how that goes. Uh, T-Wave, Air Slash... Not as reliable as T-Wave Ironhead, because there's a 5% chance I'm going to miss, which means there's a 50% chance I'm going to miss. But, uh, really solid, gets Roost, uh, which, you know, I just, it's hard to kill. Um, Stab Dazzling Gleam is super nice as well, and some ridiculous coverage moves. Um, you know, it gets Aura Sphere and Nasty Plot and whatever else, like, I don't even know. So, Togekiss, solid Mon, um, something I really didn't think I was going to use, but, you know, why not? Um, figure to give it a shot. Uh, do you have anything, uh, anything you want to say about Togekiss is actually one of my favorite Pokemon, like, of all time. Um, maybe it's because I have a thing for Serene Grace Pokemon, but 
that's uh i, I just really love it um come on they get extreme speed as well so if you want to be uh kind of cheeky and just want to like pick up that yeah KO. exactly um and yeah. yeah so yeah thunder wave the air slash is always fun um or as well uh, i wish i got moon blast if you got moon blast it would I really wish I got Moonblast. I really do. 60% chance to lower special attack. Stab. That would be nice, but... Rip the dream. So, okay. uh, next up we've got the Fort Wayne Gastrodons picking up Metagross here uh, at the end of round 5. Real solid Mon. Uh, very good Stealth Rocker. Very good priority user. Uh, insane coverage. Insane attack and defense stats. Love this Mon. So... Uh, yeah, in order to, to justify this stream, I am going to start picking up the pace a little yeah. bit, so we're not going to talk nearly as long as the rounds continue. Um, but Metagross, really, really good mon, and I would like to get your best and worst pick of round five. Um, show me the, the screen, because I can't see it. It's up, but it's delayed for Okay, you. uh, best pick... Yeah. Uh, I just think that, I just love it as a wall. Um, worst pick, um, actually still pretty good, um, worst pick, uh, uh, I'd probably just go with Toxapex, uh, I mean, like, I know, I know it's, like, an amazing <laughs> wall, but the thing is that, um, like, you've already got Purdy and Greninja on the team. Adding an extra fair, water fair. type is kind of like redundant in a sense, but uh, but it's not the worst thing in the world either. I mean, it's right, just it's just so... kind of hard picking between apples and oranges. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna go with an alternating uh, pick here, and we're just gonna go blazing through the next few rounds since we are towards the end of the draft. So playmaker, I'm just gonna alternate who speaks about which pick. Yeah, you ready? Sure. All right, so I'm gonna start off. Actually, I'm gonna let. Uh, Manbird start off he would like to since he said he wanted to talk about Puff Daddy over here Slurpuff coming in right here um, and uh, this thing gets sticky webs and is I believe the only non bug type to get sticky webs so Manbird if you'd like to go oh yes I would love I would love to go uh, so Puff Daddy is my favorite mon in draft format 100% like there's no comparison for me uh, it's such a versatile sticky webber. Like, I know Rabambi has that speed and that quiver dance going for it, but this thing gets unburdened. I have actually used it to counter Coco Lucha before, and it worked like an absolute dream. Because you go in there, you get your plus one defense boost from the uh, electric seed popping, you calm mind up once, and then just everything drops to your will. And uh, you think, like, something like Scizor or something like a Scavalier is going to come in and answer this thing, it's gonna hit you with that flamethrower like it's nobody's business. And not only that, but you have to prep for its belly drum set, or that belly drum set is going to come in and kill your entire team before you even knew what happened. Six O's for days if that thing gets going with belly. And it's just such a beautiful mon. It has the best shiny in game. I love this thing. It even gets wish, so it has recovery, and it's just such a versatile monster of a Pokemon. So that is how we're gonna go into that circle. I was gonna say uh, I agree with picking it just because it has an awesome shiny. Like that's the number one reason why you should pick any Pokemon. Facts. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> All right. So uh, next up is my pick, and that is going to be Tentacruel. Uh, Tentacruel, I think, gives me a Toxic Spike Setter and Toxic Spike Absorber. Gives me a Rapid Spinner, which I totally didn't have in Donphan and Togekiss and Hydreigon in removal. Um, Stab Water, which I was missing before, and really nice Scald, Sludge Bombs, shenanigans like that, uh, base 100 speed, which is really nice as well. Otherwise, I just think this thing was a special wall to pair with Donphan, um, so I thought this thing had a really good chance of being successful on this team. Really wish it got some form of recovery that is an Aqua Ring and, Le and Black Sludge, but hey, we'll take what we can get on some level. Uh, and then Knock Off, obviously, super useful move for this thing to just have, because reasons, I don't know why it gets Knock Off, but it does, uh, which is awesome, so... First time on, super fun. Really excited to use it. Never used it before in league format. Uh, your turn, playmaker, with me and Shao. Right, me and Shao, great regenerator. Gets fake out. 
U-turn. Really great with Scarf or Rex. Halfway to his like and, regenerator core. Yeah, no, I, I, I know he's just missing how many more? Uh, three more. Right, that's <laughs> all he needs. Um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully, see if if Reuniclus didn't get taken, then there was going to be an even bigger chance for this to happen. But yeah, and Torn T as well. And... Oh yeah, Torn Torn T. Man. Yeah, Manbert, just trade him your regenerator. <laughs> That'll do it. Um, but okay, never mind. Uh, so yeah, I'm done. Top out, Mian Chao. All right, cool. So we're gonna jump into uh, Raikou, the pick of the Fancy Angar Boaters. Really solid electric type. Um, I don't know if it's the rich man's Jolteon or if it's the poor man's Aurora or how you want to count it. But uh, Raikou is a really good uh, like sixth round pick in my opinion. Really solid mon. Very very versatile um, and bulky and just a great great offensive electric type. That puts on a ton of pressure, no pun intended, um, <laughs> on the opponent's team every time it comes on the field um, with the with the move pool that it gets and the ability to just call mine in your face like nobody's business. Uh, next up, it's your turn with King Kelder. Let's go with you in the fighting type. Right um, so, yeah, I mean, I think this is uh, a really solid pick. Uh, gets Iron Fist as well as Guts Force abilities. I think Guts is an amazing ability, by the way. And Sheer Force. Yes, you're right, but... I mean, I'd rather just go Guts all day uh, just because statuses are very common and even if they don't seem to be running status, you can run Flame Orb or something and get the uh, double attack. And, yeah, I mean, it gets Mach Punch, Knock Off, Drain Punch for Recovery. Um, I think it's the uh, the Salt Fest user. Um, and uh, it's a very, very solid pick. Yeah, I love I love Kinkelder. And I love it around six here too. It's a really, really solid mon there. Uh, next up we have Torrent Greninja going out to Hydra's team, uh, which definitely needed a little bit more support in the speed category, uh, because Coco Infernape wasn't good enough. Um, and this thing we've talked about it with Protein Greninja, it just does the same things, just it doesn't get stabbed. Um, but hey, that doesn't make it a bad mon at all. Base one twenty two speed still gets the spikes and T spikes and U turn and all those shenanigans. Same way that Protean Greninja does. Not much more to say about it. Jumping in to the next pick, Necrozma. This is yours, Yay! Playmaker. So okay, yeah, it. so Necrozma is uh, a very... Um, I think just Photon Geyser is one of the coolest moves uh, just because you can choose whether it's physical or special just based on how you set your uh, EVs and IVs and all that. Pictures and all that, of course, playing a role. Uh, so yeah, this thing's uh, uh, pretty cool because of that, and then uh, Photon, uh, sorry, and then it gets, uh, it could be an amazing wall as well, I've run it defensively before, uh, Just it gets Stealth Rocks, Thunder Wave, uh, Toxic, and uh, it's, it's definitely pretty cool, uh, and I picked it just because um, I had to also, I needed a psychic type after Reuniclus got sniped early i suppose question mark but yeah i definitely needed this thing yeah and necrozma is a really solid mon i've never had the chance to use it but it's a really good rocker and reliable recovery and everything so uh next up calling's drafted curum regular curum uh which is he's in call if he wants to talk about this himself uh, um i think it's really just like a budget curum black especially if you're just going to bring curum black um special they got the same special attack. Um, it also can be defensive with like Roost, Sub, Toxic. So uh, Ice and Dragon, two really good offensive types. So fit my team what I needed. There you go. That's all you need sometimes. Just it did what he wanted it to do, and that's the mod he went with. Um, so next up, the British Brooks are going to grab Hippowdon, which is a very good sand setter um, for the Excadrill. The rest of his team really doesn't appreciate the sand, so I'm curious how he's going to play that out each week, but uh, it does exist. He has that option now with Hippowdon, and it's admittedly probably one of the best rockers in format. So what else is there to say about it? Slack off for reliable recovery, uh, Whirlwind if you really want to run that, and just a good rocker in general, um, plus sand for Excadrill. Next up, we have Brendan with Blissey, Playmaker. How about you go for this um, one? I think this was a really solid pick. Um... He definitely has his special 
while uh, covered. Gosh, that HP stat is freaking ridiculous. Um, like, I agree, that's a good team right there. I, I mean, <laughs> gosh, like I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm kind of specious to how like fat this thing is. Um, yeah, it doesn't like taking a drain punch, but um, <laughs> it's uh, it's like you know it can, it can stall things out with soft boil toxic and then paralyze things with thunder wave. Like if you get rid of all of the physical attackers on an opponent's team, you win with the same. Like pretty that's much, it. Uh, he does need to figure out an answer to an offensive. Uh, fighting type, something like the King Kelder or the Mian Shadow that came earlier this draft, since his his draft doesn't appreciate like the knockoff slash drain punch prediction here. Um, but otherwise, this thing is an incredible special wall. Next up, we have Nick picking up Tornadus Eye, uh, which I used in the GBA D League and actually loved. Um, super cool mon. Same things as Tornadus T, except instead of Regenerator, it's Prankster. Which oh my god, that was so loud in my ears. So I apologize to anyone wearing headphones. Um, but anyway, thanks for the host, Root. Appreciate that. Uh, Torneye is a phenomenal, phenomenal defogger since it gets Prankster. Really solid mon um, with incredible offensive uh, capabilities and uh, cre incredible utility moves as well. Um, and U-Turn is obviously something that this thing can run all the time. Knockoff is really useful as well. Um, and it's just basically the same thing as Torn T, just Prankster instead of Regenerator and a couple of changes in its stats but otherwise very, very similar. Next up for you and the final pick of the round, Tishan, nope, not Tishan, Playmaker, Alex is picking up Heliolisk. Ooh, Heliolisk. Uh, I mean, yeah, this thing's... Uh, I personally don't really use Heliolisk all too much, but, you know, it gets Surf and Grass Knot, which are very good uh, coverage moves. Uh, it's pretty fast. It can Always goes well with the Choice Scar, Choice Specs. Uh, Thunderbolt, if you want to go uh, solar power, you, you just uh, a sunsetter and then, or get sunny day up. And yeah, this thing will dish out some serious damage. Yeah, um, really solid mon. Um, so here we look at the round recap. Um, some really good mons taken this round as well. I think that round six can Kelder. Round 6, Necrozma, Raikou. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Um, I honestly might give worst pick to myself in this case. Uh, Tentacruel's not a bad mon, um, but some of these other mons are just real scary. Uh, <laughs> so, Playmaker, why don't you give us your, your best worst? Um, my best worst? Um, I would say the best the I like I really like Kelder at at this uh, at this pick. Um, you know, it's uh, it's in tier two and it's just really strong. Um, your opponent always has to take it into account whenever prepping for it, and has to be wary of of clicking any sort of stats move when it's around. And I think it goes really well with Hep's team too. Uh, maybe my, my yeah, least sure. favorite is. Probably Mian Xiao, uh, just because of how good everything else is. Um, I mean, yeah, like it gets Regenerator, but at the same time, like it's. Dude, Reckless High Jump Kick hurts. Does. Uh, but it's. Um, like. Uh, whatchamacallit? A glass cannon, if you will. Sure. Uh, sure. Defenses aren't all too. Great. Like I like things that have a little bit of meat of meat on them, but then again, I did draft Zerora, so like. <laughs> um, All right. Well, we'll jump into round seven yeah. here, so we're gonna keep this one moving. And Alex is gonna grab Torkoal. Speaking of the sun that you were talking about with the Heliolisk, so Alex, if you want to talk about this, yeah. One. So this is this is kind of the round where my uh, team started to turn into a semi uh, sun team, I guess you could say, uh, with Torkoal and Heliolisk. Um, I really kind of only draft Torkoal just for Heliolisk, really, and uh, a few later mods, as you'll see, but yeah, um, I don't really know much more to say about it, I guess. It can set up the sun, and that's 
Yeah, that's about it. That's a spinner. It's yeah, a self rock center. It sets up suns. It's really good at the self pass. It's toxic as well. If I was looking. Interesting, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I like Torkoal, actually. I think it's a cool mod. Uh, White Smoke's not a bad ability if you don't want to run Drought one week, um, since it just means that you can't lower its stats. Um, and I've seen really successful just, like, Shell Smash, Overheat shenanigans going on. So sure. definitely options going on there. Uh, following that up, we have Nick and the Majority Magazine is picking up S Cavalier. So, Playmaker, why don't you go in on this one? Uh, yeah, you know, like, it's uh, a four-man's uh, scissor. Good. Uh, doesn't get the same priority that scissor gets. Uh, it's really good on trick room teams. Uh, it's got... Yeah, it's got really uh, respectable uh, attack and defenses. I mean, and then, yeah, I think uh, also even slapping the salt vest on it, it makes it a pretty good wall as well, so I say about it. All right, so moving on to the next pick, we've got Sylveon, uh, and this team picks up a second special wall, a Wish Passer uh, that isn't Blissey. It's oh, it's looking like a team that's going to be hard to break down. And like I said about fighting types, well, there's your answer, uh, Sylveon, right there, just comes in and. It does, takes nothing from any fighting type attack, from any dark type attack. Um, that's what fairies were brought into existence for, and Sylveon was the flagship, and it did a really good job. Um, Pixelate, Hyper Voice, going to be doing a lot of damage. But if you really want, Pixelate, Hyper Beam is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've run it before, and it just gets a kill. It's pretty great. Um, slap on a choice specs, Pixelate, Hyper Voice, or Hyper Beam. Uh, it's thing's gonna, it's thing's going to destroy somebody's life. Um, yeah, so next up, we've got Linoon by the British Bruxish. So talk about this one, Playmaker. Round seven. Um, I mean, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first tier five. Uh, I believe you are correct. Um, I think it's, uh, rightfully a, uh, if you will. Uh, this does give him probably the more, up oh, spoiler slide right there. No, <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I mean, this thing is uh, extreme speed, gluttony, you know, all those things are online. Uh, an extreme speed stab hits ghosts with shadow claw, um, and then bulldoze for those rock and steel types. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, everyone knows what it does, but the question is, <laughs> can you, like, stop it? Like, that's, can you stop that's it? really it. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we've got, as I accidentally spoiled, Mill Tank, which is one of my favorite mods in format recently. Uh, this thing, super bulky, good stealth rock setter, really good cleric. Um, I've run Choice Band in Mill Tank, which is a lot of fun. Uh, based on 100 speed, which it doesn't really utilize, but actually enjoys being able to outspeed things without having to... Is, is Koas on? Use, so, if uh, you wanted to talk about it, or...? Uh, he said he had to go a bit ago, so he is no longer gotcha, here. Gotcha, didn't mean to interrupt. Um, no, no worries, no worries. Um, but yeah, I think it fits his team really well. His team's coming together, um, and as the, the Summer League champion, I would expect nothing less than a terrifying team like he's been putting together. Um, so you're up next with Crobat. Uh, talk about Crobat. Crobat. Um, I think this is more of a, a counter team pick, if anything. Um, uh, I just saw like a lot of fast Pokemon uh, being drafted within my uh, within my division, and I was like, okay, like I need to even I need more speed. Like, uh, <laughs> like I, already, I know I had zero already, but like I was like, yeah, I need th like I need more speed, and like in other divisions that um, that like like Pokemon like Meg the later drafted, and like other fighting types that were intimidating. I needed something that would eat fighting types and yes because having Volcarona, Mimikyu, Necrozma was not enough for fighting oh, yeah. types. Oh I mean, yeah, I mean I guess it's because I was <laughs> more paranoid that I had a Mega Gyarados on my team and so like hey I mean whatever yeah you do you man I mean this is good coverage for that um pairs super well with it because the weaknesses are just not shared at all uh you know outside of electric but You've got Garchomp and Zero Aura, so I wouldn't worry too much about Electro-types. And then, outside of Volcarona, this is my, uh, 
my other defogger. And uh, yeah, I get Super Fang and Toxic as well. And uh, so that's also a nice combination. And yeah, I can think this is All right. pretty good. So next up, we've got uh, the Mighty Ennas, and they are going to pick up regular Swampert here. So Greninja and Swampert going back to back on this team. Um, they do def definitely different things as water types, but I do not know if I would have picked up both. But hey, between these two water types, he has every single uh, entry hazards, uh, not counting web, covered. So there you go. There's something there with, with these two mods. Uh, Swampert, only weak to grass, uh, and then he's got Scizor, Infernape, Shaman, all to cover that. So he's got some answers that can help uh, Swampert's weaknesses, but I don't know if I would have necessarily grabbed both Swampert and Greninja. Um, and especially not back to back like this since most people were already set on a water type and really didn't, it really wasn't at risk of being sniped, I don't believe. Um, but yeah, Swampert's a really solid stealth rock setter and a really good bulky mon, uh, in general. Uh, gives him a more bulky water where Greninja's a more offensive one anyway. Yeah. Next up is Hef's pick and Hef grabbed Registeel. So why don't you talk about Registeel? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, unless, it did, it, did Hef want to talk about it or is he like... I didn't. I have has not come into uh, Wish Shadow. Okay, like that's to. fine. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, Rift Steel is really cool in that uh, it's. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can go with your standard Stealth Rock, Toxic, Seismic Toss, and I guess uh, some other move I can't remember. That, but like, you can also go. Iron Head. Yeah, Iron Head. Yeah, there you go. Um, but then you can also do like uh, Curse uh, Curse Sets as well. It's Thunder Wave. Wave. Gets access to some, yeah, it gets some weird moves. That's, um, that's uh, uh, you know, this 81 I've used it before. I actually like it a lot. I, th I think I remember that too. All right. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, that was the uh, UBLN season. So next up, we have T Shen grabbing Gligar, uh, which is the, you know, poor man's Gly score, but does a little bit of a different thing in that it doesn't get quite as reliable recovery and in exchange it gets stupid bulk. Um, you know, as long as you don't get knocked off, this thing is terrifying uh, to the utmost. It is so hard to break. Really reliable stealth rock setter and defogger. Uh, gets roost, you usually often run toxic, gets knock off, gets U-turn. Does everything Gliscor does, but just in tier four and with Eviolite instead of poison heal. Um, there's really not much else about it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think like our Gligar is a good mon. It just is a good round seven pick. Yeah, and uh, next up, no, have... so I was, I was going to oh, say sorry, that go this thing just completely shut down T Shen in the TBL finals. <laughs> so uh, I can understand why he picked it. Dude, hate picks are real. Yeah. All right, you're up right now with Aerodactyl. Well, uh, it's really fast. Um, and. Doesn't get Regenerator, so it doesn't fit his team. It's, uh, it's a terrible pick just because of that. Um, no, I'm just kidding. All kidding aside, uh, it's. I mean, if you got really good attack and really good speed, I mean, you're set. Like that's. Uh, I mean, that's what this thing's here for. And. And yeah. Yeah, finally gets him off the ground, which is nice. So. Yeah, that's true. Lots going on there. Good, good defogger. As I think well. it goes well with uh, his team. Good stealth rock setter. It does pair well, really, really well with his team. Gives him that speed tier. I think he was missing in the upper. You know, upper speed. That's very true. It's the first thing above uh, uh, 100, if I'm not. Uh, me and Chaz 105, but yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so next up is me. So I picked up Darmanitan at this point. Um, I think Darmanitan is so much fun. Um, I've loved this thing since Gen 5 when it first came out. It hits so hard. I mean, there's sheer force, stab, flare blitz. Slap on a choice band and things are dying. I mean, they just aren't surviving. And Sheer Force boosts Rock Slide. Sheer Force boosts, uh, I don't even know what else this thing wants to do, but I mean, this Superpower, Earthquake, uh, U-Turn, this thing, I mean, it's just, and base 105 HP means that you are actually gonna survive for a little while when you're getting the recoil damage from Flare Blitz, um, which is really, really nice. Um, I don't know, there's really not much else to say about it. It does one thing, it does one thing really, really well, and that's just, that's just hit things incredibly hard. Um, and I thought my team was really missing that offensive pressure from a real strong physical attacker. So I decided why not slap a Darmanitan on this team. Uh, it gives me a little bit more U-turn and some other fun utility as well. 
And finishing out the round, why don't you finish us out here, Playmaker, with Zerkatree. Uh, yeah, Zerkatree's, uh... Um... Manbird, if you're here, if you want to speak about it. Nope, okay, Playmaker, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Zerkatree's cool. Uh, this thing has the potential to sweep. This is a thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, he already has, uh, slows things down with Sticky Web, and... So, I mean, like, 173 special attack is nothing to sneeze at. That's very, very true. All right, so you're going to have to wrap us up here in this round with your uh, best worst picks here. Best worst picks. Um, and, yeah, I'm roll. curious what you're going to say in this round. Uh, this hasn't pulled up for me. I don't know if it's pulled up for anyone else, but... Oh, okay, there it is. Okay, so I'll say best pick would be the mill tank pick. Uh, just at tier four, it's a very good value. Um, Absolutely. And it gets the stealth rocks as well as um, milk drinking, and uh, I can body slam things and paralyze things, and uh, it's and heal bell is also a thing for good support. So yeah, I mean it's like really good. Uh, it. And least favorite pick? Uh, dude, I really hate being mean. Um, I'd say my least favorite pick is probably the. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter what your least favorite pick is, honestly. Yeah. As long as that person likes their pick, so. That's you true. That's true. Want. I'll say I'll say Torkoal just because he's got uh, Mega Scissor on his team and. Um, well, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, all right. Works for me. All right, we're going to jump into round eight here. Uh, Sorry, Alex. Speed up the end of the stream. I love a you. A little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we've got the Zygarde 10% going round eight. I cannot believe this thing was still on the table at this point. Incredible value pick. Um, making a fast team even faster uh, another mon in between that like crazy 113 to 121 speed tier that he's been like really sitting in this entire time um and just such a good just such a good mon to grab in round eight honestly um two types he needed it's clear that he was looking at this thing uh for a long long time and just held out until this point and nobody else took it so he had a gamble and it paid off so you know not much else to say about it Next up is my pick, so I probably should have let you talk about That's that one, but... Oh, well, uh... <laughs> I grabbed Hitmontop, uh, because, you know, once again, don't think I have enough spin on this team, so we're gonna grab more spinners. Um, but I really wanted the... Like, in all honesty, I really wanted the Intimidate. I wanted something that could be on the ground and not weak to Earthquake. Um, uh, I wanted something to, to resist, uh... Another, another, uh, rock resist, and... Just really solid mod in terms of gives me another priority user. It gets like all the priority. It gets like mock punch and sucker punch and bullet punch and fake out. Um, and intimidate is a really really useful ability for this thing to have. Um, bulky, uh, low HP, but like pretty bulky otherwise. Um, I do, I don't believe it's base 95 speed. I don't think that's correct, but uh, otherwise pretty solid mod all around. Um, and I think in terms of round, I think round eight is about time for him on top to go. So. Next up, we've got the Bracknell Beedrills picking up the mascot pick, Mega Beedrill. Why don't you talk about that, Playmaker? Um, for being tier 2, I think it was a... And... Um... Uh, is it... Okay, there we go. Um... Yeah, this thing's, uh, super fast. Uh, defenses kind of suck. Uh, I mean, if you want to run special Mega Beedrill, that's, uh... That'll be, uh... That'll be a solid move. For the memes, you guys. Um, Dude, it's all about those meme games. And uh, you know, uh, adaptability U-turn is uh, is pretty nice to have. Um, I mean, nobody likes weaknesses to rock, but uh, and then this thing like by uh, by Gligar. But I mean, other than that, like I think it's like uh, especially if you can keep it healthy. Like, it's getting to do a lot of work. 
Yeah, if you haven't seen my ICBA semifinal battle against Aaron, he plays a really interesting Toxic Spikes Roost uh, defensive Mega Beedrill. It's really interesting. Oh, interesting. So yeah. Definitely go check that one out. It's a really wild game. Uh, but, well, actually, I would advise not checking that one out because Mandibuzz ends up sweeping. But, and it's really boring. But there's a really interesting Beedrill set, so. Uh, next up, we have the Fancy Land Garboders picking up Vaporeon. So, Gligar Vaporeon, uh, an absolutely horrifying core uh, right there. And I think this team is shaping up to actually be very, very scary. I know Tishan didn't love it, but honestly, I think this thing is pretty terrifying. Uh, Vaporeon is one of the best wish passers in the game, since it does get wish and baton pass, which it means that if since it's so slow, it can baton pass second uh, and pass that wish pretty safely into whatever it wants to go into. Um, and Scald, Stab Scald from this thing hurts. It's base 110 a special attack. Like, why, why not? Um, and 30% chance to burn. Don't get the burn. Okay, let's just click Toxic instead. Uh, this thing gets Acid Armor, gets Baton Pass, so... Vaporeon's got a lot of utility. I love this Pokemon. I think that the next big core in Gen 7 is uh, Vape Tank, Vaporeon Mill Tank. Really, really solid core, and y'all should check it out. Uh, but anyway, enough about that. We're going to move on to Hef's pick. The St. Louis Charizards grabbed Decidueye. Why don't you talk about that one, Playmaker? Uh, yeah, I really like Decidueye. Um, Spirit Shackle's uh, pretty awesome in... In terms of being able to trap your opponent uh, and being able yeah. to uh, to plan strategically from there, it's great with the, the defogger. His defenses suck. Uh, like, <laughs> like uh, it's special defense is fine, uh, but it's very defenses. And all right, so uh, next up we've got Nihiligo going in round eight, which I think is honestly a pretty big steal as well. Just like the Zydog pick. Um, very good Mon, gets two different terms of entry hazards in T-Spikes and Stealth Rocks, um, and one of the best setters of both of those in the format. Obviously, tiny, tiny physical defense, kind of the opposite of Kartana. Um, I believe it was pretty much designed to be the antithesis to Kartana, um, but really, really interesting offensive typing uh, with Poison and Rock, and just a really interesting Mon to use in format. 103 speed is pretty great. Um, and he's commenting on his own Edgequake weakness, but yeah, this thing's not going to help that too, too much. Uh, but it is a pretty fast mod, pretty interesting mod, and Beast Boost, always a good ability to have on your team. Next up, it's you, Playmaker, so tell me about this thing. This gosh darn Stakatica, Stakataka, Stakataka, Stakataka. Yeah, sorry dude, I was just telling my cousin. Um, no, uh, this, uh, yeah, I, I love Stakataka, dude. I mean, the thing is, the, uh... But I just think it's kind of uh, I like I really liked its stats, especially the uh, extremely high uh, defense stat. Um, but it's got two times four weaknesses to uh, to fighting and ground, which are very common. So I got to watch out for that. I needed a steel type because I didn't have. Uh, a steel type otherwise for my steel dragon fairy and uh the the, the biggest wall in the game literally <laughs> literally the biggest wall in the game um all right so next up is going to be koinks grabbing hitmon chan uh, which i think actually fits his team incredibly well gives him a rapid spinner um, iron fist with all of its punching moves is super useful get does get priority I believe it gets both Bullet Punch and Mock Punch as well, just like him on top. Um, and just a generally useful Mon with good coverage moves and all of its crazy amounts of punches and Drain Punch, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, Mock Punch, Bullet Punch. Uh, like, I didn't even realize there were that many punches, but there they are. Um, still don't know why Poison Jab doesn't get boosted by Iron Fist, but we are where we are. Um, and this thing does give him a decent switch into attacks that want to target other Mons on his team. Um, it's not very bulky on the physical side, but does have pretty solid special defense as well, so... Himachan, pretty good mon. I lost Playmaker, so we are just rocking out by myself. Next up is the British Bruxish grabbing Tapu Finney. So he's going to have the no status team um, over there. Uh, some sand, some no status. I honestly, I don't think Finney functions that well on a sand team. It does not want to lose its own option for leftovers recovery because of its lack of alternative recovery. But that doesn't mean Finny by itself is a bad mod. I think this thing has incredible stats for what it needs to do, which is basically just be able to switch in uh, and pivot around 
Um, it's a really good defogger. Moonblast hurts like the dickens coming off this thing. And honestly, I just think Tapu Fini is one of... It's one of the weaker Tapus, but that doesn't make it a bad mon. A weak Tapu is still a Tapu. It's still a good mon. So in terms of her pick, round 8 is a great time to grab Tapu Fini if it's still available. Next up is Brendan and the Trenton Thunderous. And they are going to go ahead and grab Alolan Persian here in round 8, which is a great round 8 pick in my opinion. Really fits his team incredibly well. Um, parting Shot is just a good move. I mean, we talked about how much we love momentum here in this league, and this thing gives you uh, some of the best momentum in the entire game because Parting Shot just lowering the stats really, really useful. If you don't want a Parting Shot, you've got Fake Out, you've got Dark Pulse, you've got Knock Off, you've got all sorts of options, Power Gems. So really good Dark type, really fun mod to use in my opinion. I think it's going to be... Uh, I've always wanted to, to draft it, but I, I didn't this time because I took Hydreigon instead. Uh, and I think it's going to fit this team incredibly well. It's an incredibly scary team over here. Next up, we have the Missouri Magazones picking up the Lowland Persian. Uh, just kidding. They picked up Ditto, uh, which is one of my favorite mods in Draft League format. It forces prep in ways that there's no denying Ditto uh, and how much prep it forces... In, even if it doesn't show up um, and I think that's the biggest thing about ditto is that it it doesn't have to come to a match to be relevant in that match round eight is such value for this ditto I am I don't know man like I if I had noticed it was still on the board I probably would have drafted it honestly I just can't believe it made it all the way to round eight and finally to wrap up round eight we have Ursa ring uh, which <laughs> Another Guts mod with a base attack of, like, ridiculously high. Um, and Stab Facade coming off this thing with a Guts boost. Uh, scary. Stab Facade coming off this thing with a Quick Feed boost. Little bit less offensively scary. Coming at you faster, though. Uh, so this thing loves being status. Um, and loves just coming in and doing a ton of damage. Um... I believe it gets close combat, it gets just ridiculously good moves, uh, and I, honestly all you really need is facade and maybe maybe one coverage move for steel types and you're going to be pretty set. I know it gets shadow claw as well for ghost types, so Ursa Ring, I like this as a tier 5 mod. I've never considered drafting it, but I actually think it's a pretty solid tier 5 mod. And here we are going to see the uh, end of round slide as well, um, once again, and I think this... this I don't know, man. This was the round of grabbing mons that were just incredible value. Uh, between Zygarde, 10%, Ditto, Tapu Fini, Nihiligo. Those are all mons that like should have gone yeah. significantly earlier. Uh, what's up, Alex? Yeah, you want to talk about no, anything? I was just going to say that there is really no bad pick in this round. Let's just say that right here. No, this is a, this is a wild round. Uh, I was, yeah, pretty... Pretty impressed across the board. It'd be hard to say that there's a bad pick in this. I round. love the Ditto pick. That's prob that's probably my favorite. Um, I love Vaporeon as well. Uh, B drill, of course. Yeah, Apple I know everything. Pick. I think I would have draft like, I would be happy with this draft. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if this was like a team I drafted. I'd be like, all right, like I can make this work. Um, it's got everything. So. All right, so next up, starting in the next round, Alex, if you're here, why don't you start us off with Venusaur, regular Venusaur. Yeah, so I was thinking early on uh, to grab, like, Mega Venusaur, but obviously didn't work out in my favor. But regular Venusaur, seeing as I was building sort of a sun team here <laughs> as well towards the end, uh, just kind of worked out well conveniently, I guess. Um, it does good in the sun, and I was team building with Hef earlier, and I've had a lot of or team building around this thing. Uh, it's just a it's just a very solid mod. It's got a decent special defense, decently high special attack, uh, pretty decent speed as well, not gonna lie. Um, so yeah. That base 80 we've been talking yeah. about before, so. Alright, so moving on to Nick's round 9 pick. He's gonna pick up Zatu, one of my favorite tier 5 mods in format. Uh, magic bounce absolutely incredible this thing is scary this thing hits hard this thing has u-turn this thing has defog this thing is awesome so real real talk uh real talk zatu round nine love it love it love it love it um 
I would have taken it later on in the draft. I was going to draft it, but I think it is a pretty solid mon, all things considered. So, personally, Zatu pick, great pick in my opinion. Uh, really no downside to this mon. It's bulkier than you expect it to be. Uh, it takes that one hit you needed to take. Uh, it can pivot in on something that's going to have sticky webs or rocks. Um, you know, playing this thing aggressively is really, really big, but I know Nick's a very good uh, aggressive player, so that is something he's going to be able to utilize throughout his time in this this season and next up we have the round nine buzzwool by the trend thunderous and this thing really solid on this team that physically offensive mon to pair with mammoth swine that he kind of needed um and kartana obviously he's got um a really good spread of offense and defense this thing really strong really good coverage moves great scarfer uh great choice band user um just I don't even know what to say about it. It just hits so hard and it's so strong. It pairs well um, with his team too. Like I don't think he could have gone with Yeah, and it fits his team incredibly well. So absolutely. I forgot you were yeah, here, I'm Alex. Just, so. I'm just gonna <laughs> pipe in since uh Playmaker's not here every once in a while and I feel like I Yeah, can. no problem. I'm just trying to, to blaze yeah, through yeah, a few of these picks sure. here before he gets back. I'm not sure where he went or where he went yeah. on the back, <laughs> we're here now. Uh so next up we got the British Bruxish picking up Lucario. Finally something else in his team that is immune to sand. A second steel type that is weak to ground, weak to fighting, um, bit and weak to fire. A bit of a risk in that sense, but um, Lucario is a great mon with good priority on both sides, physical and special. Gives him um, a really good setup sweeper that he was sort of lacking elsewhere on his team. Yeah, Tapu Fini gets calm mind with Chandelure, um, but like otherwise, and Lainun, I guess, Belly Drum if you really want to count that as a setup sweeper, but. Um, I don't know, Lucario I think puts in a lot more pressure than the other two, um, and I personally like Lucario a lot. I know a lot of people, there's a lot of uh, dissent amongst the community about how good Lucario actually is, but I think when used by someone who knows what they're doing, uh, I'm back by the way. Really solid. Lucario. Uh, welcome back, Playmaker. I was, I was eyeing up Luca Lucario for the next round, and then this is the second and final time I got sniped, because I didn't really have too much of a plan going into this. But uh, one of the mons that I was eyeing up was Lucario, I just, I've always wanted to use it. And now I got a team build against it, so that's always fun. <laughs> um. <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. brutal. Um, Alright, so Koenx's next pick is gonna be Lorantis. Um, so Playmaker, if you want to take over these next two picks. Oh yeah, sure, I got uh, you. Since this, is, it's this one and then yours, so. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, really, uh, I really think this pick sucked. Uh, Cohen's... My next pick was going to be Lorantis, like just just for the record, and then he uh, just yeah. snipes it one pick before <laughs> me, and I was I was just literally furious. I was like, who the hell drafts Lorantis? I... Like I've never seen it drafted, drafted, and if someone did draft it, they would save it for the last round. Like real talk. Like this is just me being salty. Um, like, uh, like I really hope Cohen loses the league because of this pick. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I mean, like I, I was like, I was like, okay at first with if Cohen won, but now he can't win. He cannot win. Mm -hmm. Anyways, if you want to talk about what this thing does, it's, uh, it's one it gets defog, which I actually need it on my team, but, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it gets, uh. Contrary with um, uh, Leaf Storm, so yeah, that and it's really low speed, so it's good for um, that uh, that thing that they call Trick Room. Uh, it's you can slap an Assault Vest on it, and it becomes really good then. Uh, pretty good defenses. Uh, like I think its uh, stats are generally better than Superior's, except for the speed stat. I actually think it's it's a really good uh, Pokemon. Uh, All right. So what did you take instead of Lorantis? Uh, if you remember, it's Comfey. Uh, I hate Comfey. This I I just I, I'm. It can be good, but um, just, I picked this because I had nothing else to pick, and I was. Like, the thing is, like, Manbird had told me he was going to get 
Blastoise too, and I just to him and take Blastoise right before he got Blastoise. You know, like that would that would have been such an <laughs> anal thing to do. I would have been, I would have been like, like I was sorry, I, I, it would have been horrible of me to do that. Uh, so I was like, you know what? Like at least Comfy gets Defog. It can uh, do aromatherapy things and. Does it actually a default? It does. That. Yeah, and it can uh, stuff. <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to the oh, next and, pick now. And, and uh, a priority drain kiss is pretty awesome too. There you go. Priority and, th plus three yes, priority. Yes, and with synthesis as well. With uh, triage. So yeah. next pick was Hydra's Braviary, which I think is one of the more underrated mons uh, in league format. I love Braviary, and I definitely want to draft it someday. Super interesting. I do think it's just a poor man's Staraptor on some level, but it also does its own thing on others. Um, and Defiant is just such a good ability. Yes, it doesn't deter Sticky Webs because it is a flying type, but it does deter you from defogging. Uh, and if you get, again, if you're going to hit Moonblast against something like his Greninja, you're going to hit that Braviary. It's going to take that hit pretty well with its base 100 HP, and then it's going to get that special attack drop, which it doesn't care about, and suddenly you're facing a plus 2 Braviary, and that's horrifying. Um, this thing would really benefit from U-Turn, I think, personally, but otherwise, Anti-Intimidate, def Defiant User, really solid mod uh, in general. Base 123 attack is really, really good. Uh, next up is Hef and the St. Louis Charizards picking up Sigilyph, Playmaker. Uh, Sigilyph, um, I actually am not too familiar with what this thing entirely does. I only face it, like, <laughs> once or twice it in does, my entire... You know. Like, that's, I'll, I'll, I'll let you handle this one, dude, because I don't want to F this up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it does, you know, the, the, the Wonder Guard, or Ma uh, Magic Guard, like, status psycho shifting. It does the roosting and the defogging and the the not being um, stealth rocks and, you know, <laughs> stored power. You don't really know what this <laughs> thing does. Power, power. Really? <laughs> no, I have, I like... Honestly, I've never seen anyone use anything but, like, Cosmic Power, Stored Power in this thing, so it it just kind of exists. Um, it's an interesting mod for him to pick up because it does fit his team incredibly well, um, since it isn't weak to Stealth Rocks because it doesn't get hit by Stealth Rocks, um, and it is a flying type that he can bring in um, to be immune to the ground-type moves that Registeel and Jolteon don't want to take, so... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a good mod. I actually do think it's a good mod. I think it may have gone early. I don't think anyone's going to snipe it, um, but in terms of in terms of what it can do, if you're not prepared for it, this thing can sweep your entire team. Uh, and that is something to definitely consider, so. Uh, that's true. Uh, yeah. Alright, so next up, speaking of disgusting coverage, uh, Tishan has grabbed Silvali. Ah, Silvali's, uh, I actually told him to pick this, because he was asking me, what, do you, what would you pick here? And I was like, that would be good. Uh, it's got it's pretty well rounded it statistically gets a lot of different uh, uh, moves and it can never have its uh, its plates knocked off or drives or whatever they're called something like that um, yeah so Mem memories that's right now I remember okay uh, <laughs> yeah so that it gets defog it gets parking shot it gets u-turn I've seen Swords Dance Flame Charge on it as well. Uh, Pursuit Trapper as well. Yeah, it can just really fill in a hole on any team, really. So I think it's a, it's a yeah. good move. All right. So next up, the Bracknell B Drills are going to grab Steelix, um, which is a very good stealth rocker. Another bulky mon because this team wasn't bulky enough. Um, though it doesn't get regenerators, so what's the point? Uh, Sturdy, which you're not going to want to KO this thing anyway, um, but phenomenal, phenomenal Stealth Rocker in my opinion. One of the better bulky Steel types. Um, pairs really well with his team since he's got a lot of mods that are um, that are weak to rocks, a lot of mods that don't, and this thing quad resists them. Uh, he doesn't want to be toxic, so this thing can come in on toxics alongside Mega Beedrill, so definitely options there. He's got, um, with this Steelix, um, Weak to fire types, but Slowbro. I mean, Slowbro Steelix as a core is pretty scary, honestly, all things considered. Um, 
So I think this thing has a lot of potential on his team. Uh, so next up is my pick, and I grab Zangoose as my tier 5 Mon, um, which is sort of like a poor man's Ursa Ring, except it can't be really a poor man's Ursa Ring because they're the same tier. <laughs> um, but Toxic Boost is scary. Uh, Toxic Boost makes this thing hit incredibly hard um, and gives it, I mean, Facade is ridiculous coming from this thing and it's coverage close combat it gets the elemental punches i believe it gets um quick attack it gets shadow claw uh x scissor so really interesting mon i'm not entirely sure how zangus is gonna go um i've never used it in league format before but i've heard that it's a lot of fun uh and can get a sweep if the opponent isn't really prepared for it um and so i think it's a good um good mon for me to just have on my team uh gives me that normal type so ghost immunity which is something i was kind of lacking before um and yeah i'm really curious how this is gonna go and we're gonna finish off with Manbird's pick of entei so playmaker why don't you go in there okay so i like i definitely like entei and uh in a draft format it's kind of questionable as to like how effectively it can be used i've last season then you were just like i can't do anything with this thing uh but you know it's uh you know sacred fire getting a 50 percent burn on anything is like pretty awesome it's also really good uh assault fest ente is one of my favorite sets uh i've seen uh special ente as well dude i run combine ente yeah and i've seen that run with like uh solar beam as well and yeah, Grassy MZ, MZ boom, boom. Fire yep. Blast, it'll hit hard. And it's it it solid. Got options. Um, yeah. So that wraps up the eighth round of or the ninth round of drafting, excuse me. Um, and honestly, these mods are starting to look a little bit on the weaker side, and that actually picks back up again in round ten. So, um, I think this is a bit of a lull round. So we're gonna jump right into round ten. We're not gonna waste any time here, uh, and we are going to get that Blastoise pick you were talking about, so why don't you give this one a little little once-over. Yeah, so uh, so Blastoise is uh, is pretty solid. Uh, you know, it's a really good spinner. Uh, you can just slap an Assault Fest on it, and it's really bulky. Uh, Mirror Coat is its uh, lack of uh, offensive prowess. Uh, even though it's got fairly decent... Uh, offensive stats. I uh, guess Fake Out, Aqua Jet, uh, Scald. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's it's pretty uh, well balanced overall um, in terms of what it wants to do. Yeah, um, so next up is my pick, and I grabbed Gorgeist at this point. Um, I do get all four sizes of Gorgeist. I did put on the stats that were the highest in their respective possibilities. Um, but they obviously aren't all going to be the highest that they can be in every single battle. Um, but yeah, Gorgeist interesting because of the fact that it actually le legitimately just changes stats depending on its size, um, which is kind of wild. I've never used one and I have no idea how genning one works or anything like that, but hopefully I make sure that I gen it correctly and don't get the wrong size and therefore <laughs> have completely the wrong spread. Um, so I have to make sure that I'm uh, paying attention to that whenever I get it. But <laughs> in terms of sorry, uh, sub seed, uh, sorry, go on. you're good. <laughs> Shadow sneak, uh, this thing gets Will O Wisp. It gets you know it's a pretty fun mod to use. Uh, Trick or treat, I'm sure I'll bring at some point this season just for fun, um, because making something weak to ghost type and then hitting it with a Shadow sneak and killing it would just be something I would enjoy. I think so. What were you gonna? What were you uh, I was just thinking of you like misjetting it, and then you thought you had like an extra large gore guy, and then it just turns out to be like this little, small little pumpkin thing that just popped out. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what the hell? I didn't, I didn't jet this thing. Like, <laughs> I didn't want this. Um, yeah, I don't actually know how jetting it works, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but next up, we have Miss Magius, which is one of my favorite Pokemon in format. So why don't you talk about this one, Hef? Nope, Hef. Wow, Playmaker. Oh wow, I. I called you Tishan and Hef now. We're doing really uh, well today. I think you have to call me Coens next round. Um, All right, I'll keep, the, I'll keep that in <laughs> no, mind. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, so uh, Mr. McGee here, uh, he's a uh, she, whatever, it. Uh, you know, it's uh, 
it's uh pretty interesting uh above Red. average uh speed and it gets a lot of coverage moves like mystical fire and uh that mystical fire is wild um levitate gives him something off the ground as well which i think aside from aerodactyl his team's kind of needed yeah that's that's true um and i think it's nasty plot as well and that the, just yep. with that this thing can just sweep yeah, it takes that special hit. Does not like physical hits, though. Yep. Pretty much. All right, so next up is Tishen's pick, and he picks up Typhlosion. Now, this is a pretty cool fire type for him to grab. Uh, Flash Fire gives him that fire immunity. Not that he had the weakness that he really had to cover with it, but interesting fire type. Um, pretty solid coverage. Nothing really to write home about, but okay coverage. Um, exactly the same stat distribution as Charizard, um, but not quad weak to rocks, which is nice i guess um honestly typhlosion hits pretty hard but unless you're gonna give it a specs or a life orb it's just or z move it's just not quite gonna cut it um in my opinion as far as being able to get the sweeps but it does it does a very good job as a wall breaker uh in that base 100 speed tier so really solid fire type in my opinion uh and next up we have hef's pick of kecleon so playmaker oh kecleon uh kecleon's cool uh it's Got a lot of uh, priority moves, Shadow Sneak, uh, Sucker Punch, Fake Out. But it also can do uh, Trick Room shenanigans and uh, putting us all best on it's really, uh, really nice. Uh, gets Recover. And uh, it's got a lot of uh, cool uh, coverage abilities on this uh, special side. And how open half would be to running a special Kecleon, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, like, it's, it, like, it gets, like, Ice Beam and, like, Flamethrower, I think, and interesting, uh, moves on the special side, if you will, so. Yeah. All right, so moving on to Hydra's next pick, which is going to be Kangaskhan, um, really good normal type from Tier 5, uh, it's not the Mega, but it still does everything the Mega does just once instead of twice. Um, fake Out, Power Up Punch, Soccer Punch, Earthquake. Um, base 95 attack is fine. It's not going to, you know, again, it's not going to sweep a team, but gets that priority in Soccer Punch to maybe pick up that little extra damage it needed the first time. Um, stab Return or Double Edge is really, really solid. And Base 90 Speed Tier is also pretty solid. Um, so... The mama herself coming here in round 10. And then it is Hef. Nope. I did it again. Playmaker's <laughs> pick. I don't know why I keep doing that. I literally read Playmaker and like... But Hef's name was above the Atlanta Raichu's logo. I don't know, You're man. Up. Um, <laughs> You're obsessed, my So friend. So it's Playmaker's pick next. And he grabs the Grass Bug Lee Vanny. Hey. Okay. So got to go with my... Uh, I, I, I needed something that had Sticky Web. And I think this was the best option for me. Especially since I didn't have a grass type as well. Um, so that was another. And so, yeah, I'm quad, uh, quad resisting uh, ground, but then I'm getting destroyed by any fire move. Uh, this thing gets a lot of cool things. Like, uh, it gets uh, it gets knockoff. Uh, it gets baton pass, heal bell. So, like, I, it, I think Lee Vanny is like, in terms of what you want it to do. Uh, yeah. So uh, I thought very good value for uh, for round 10. So. All right. So next up, we've got the Reno Raikou grabbing Dusk Noir. Um, honestly, like Mummy, I think Frisk is an underrated ability in League format, this thing. Uh, fun fact, it gets Mega Kick because, you know... Why not? Um, but, uh, Dust Noir, I've used it before. Shadow Sneak's really useful on it. Trick Room is an, it's an incredible Trick Room setter. Very bulky. Frisk is amazing for information for your opponent's set and spread, potentially, that they're going to be running. Um, and it gets the Elemental Punches. It gets Shadow Punch, so it can't miss. Um, Shadow Sneak for priority. Really solid mod. Fairly bulky, also. Um, yeah, base 45 HP is not much, but those defenses. Um, so... Honestly, I do like, uh, I do like Dust Noir. It does 
excuse me, it does get Seismic Toss uh, if you don't run Frisk. If you don't run the Hidden Ability, you can get Seismic Toss on it, so... It actually has access to that if you want it to, and I've run that before for sure. Um, next up is the British Bruxish, picking up Yuxi, if you want to talk about that one, Playmaker. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Yuxi is uh, one of my favorite... Um, uh, favorite walls in the game. It's, uh, it's got... It's, uh, it's got uh, decent HP. Uh, it gets U-turn, Trick Room. Uh, it's got a really good speed too, especially for it being a wall. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, like it can also like I've seen people use Healing Wish, Memento. Yeah, this thing does a lot of things. It's pretty, it's really pretty versatile, wall. and just even running screens on it too makes it pretty effective as well. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a really uh, solid pick. All right, so next up we've got Trenton Thunderous. Brendan picking up Garboder. Um, really fun mon. I honestly want to try Garboder someday. Really interesting move pool. Just strange stat spread. Very weird Pokemon. Um, but Haze is just... It's great to have a mon that has Haze on it, let's be honest. Uh, just in case. You never know when you're going to need that. Um, toxic Spikes from this thing. I believe it also gets regular Spikes. Um and sludge bombs or poison jabs or whatever you want to run on this thing it's gonna hurt uh it's you know does what it needs to do um it's neither a wall nor an offensive powerhouse but it's a good middle ground tank that does what it needs to do and gets the job done uh whenever it does come i don't expect it to come every week but again when it comes i expect it to do the work uh that it's supposed to do it's very reliable in that sense Nick and the Missouri Magnezones are picking up Gastron on their next pick. So, what do you think, Playmaker? Uh, so, this was, I think, uh, one of the better picks, especially for it being this late in the draft. Uh, Gastrodon just... Absolutely. It's... I mean, this... You know, you know, this is Bubbles. This is Bubbles. Bubbles! Like, slight bubbles. spoiler alert for anyone who plans on watching our uh, multi-battle feed. Uh... I swear I'll upload it someday. Yeah, dude, like, like, don't, I'm telling you, like, I haven't... It's like halfway edited, I swear, I swear. <laughs> Bubbles is just amazing to have. Uh, like, I'm, and we're just calling it Bubbles because... <laughs> 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 right, this, this is way too funny. Uh, it gets Recover, Big Scald, uh, Earth Power, Earthquake, um, you can get, I think it gets Mirror Code as well. Uh, I yes. believe it does, yes. Uh, and possibly counter as well, too. Um, not sure if it gets counter or not. Yeah, it's counter. Uh, I know Swamper gets counter. Yeah, both, Swamper gets both. But... I don't think uh, Gastron get counter. Otherwise, I'd be kind of okay. OP, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah. All right, so we're going to finish up this round with Chansey going to the Wisconsin Whimsicott. Toxapex, Chansey, <laughs> Gliscor, Mega Scizor. All on the same team. Who let this happen? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was Playmaker. I'd already had it in the back of my mind that I needed some cleric support, but then Playmaker's like, "Hey, where's your cleric support?" I'm like, "Hey, don't worry about it." And then Chancy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I mean, what what can really be said about? That? And he's got a little Marowak, so you can't just spam those fighting type moves. All right. Um, it's brutal, man. It's brutal. Um, all right, I don't want to face this. I do not want to face this team in my division. I just, I just <laughs> don't. Like, can I just please not? Uh, and that'll do it for round 10, the penultimate round of the draft. Um, some interesting mons here in this second to last round. And as we get into this final round, a bunch of teams need to pick up their megas, so we're going to grab those. Uh, so there's going to be some interesting mega picks, but also a few just last minute adjustments made to teams. Um, so we'll start it right off with the Wisconsin Whimsicott's picking up Charizard. So Alex, tell us about this final mod on your draft. Um, I mean, I didn't really know what else to draft, to be honest. Um, I just kind of went with what I thought looked interesting and kind of went with my team in a way, you know, the Sun team a bit. Um, and it's just a, it's just a cool looking mod too, for in terms of design, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know what, what to say, really. I... Hey, I mean, yeah. same stats as Typhlosion? Yeah, ty uh, Typhlosion uh, would have been another good one, too, but... I got sniped away from yeah. you. 
All right, so next up will be Nick and the Missouri Magazones grabbing Serena um, and a spinner for him, which is something that his team had a few defoggers but didn't have spin on it. Um, interesting moves. Trop kick's always interesting. Queenly Majesty preventing any uh, priority moves. Uh, pretty solid as well. Honestly, interesting Mon. U-turn's really good. Um, jump kick is pretty solid, but, uh, you know... It's, it's a decent physical attacker. It's a grass type, so it's got a bunch of weaknesses to watch out for. But as a round 11 pick, I think Serena is a fairly good value, all things considered. Um, and I think that he did a pretty good job grabbing this here. Next up is Brendan grabbing Palisand, Playmaker. Uh, yeah, Palisand's... Uh, I mean, I, I think uh, it's definitely one of the more underrated Pokemon. Could even be Tier 4 with how good it is. I mean, just a lot of choice specs on this thing, and you're just wrecking through teams, especially under Trick Room. Uh, like, especially if they don't have a, uh, a normal type to absorb it. Uh, it's you can get a. I've been swept by this thing. It's super frustrating. Ever in our mock battles too, dude. Uh, I can't be. I can't break Palace in. It's too good. It's, it's really good. Uh, gets uh, Shore up as well for HP recovery. Earth yep, power and uh, it's got <laughs> solid uh, special defense. Could do some work, but you can always slap into assault vest. I've said that like a million times during the stream. So you can slap into assault vest. <laughs> it'll be uh, it'll be a solid wall. But no, really, like a lot of things can can uh, thrive with an assault vest on it. So oh sure, that's why it's one of the best items in the format. All right, so next up is the British Bruxis grabbing Crate Dilly, his third grass type of the draft. Uh, a rocker like Yuxi that he I think was was lacking before that he had a pout on and I guess Excadrill but Yuxi and Cradilly really rounding that out making it a pretty solid set of stealth rockers um, really good wall but mixed offensively as well which is pretty nice just the utility I love Cradilly I do think it's a good mod um, I think as a round 11 pick it's about right I don't think you'd want to take this any earlier um, than maybe round 10 it's a pretty pretty interesting mod uh, just because of its typing and its its unique uh, way of going about doing its business, but hey, why not? Uh, oh my god, these hosts are so loud! Oh god, okay, Sock, thank you for the host, appreciate that. I need to turn that sound effect down, like, quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Cradilly, really solid mon, um, does the work that needs to do. Sorry, I have nothing else to say about it, and I got completely sidetracked. So we're going to move on to Koenig's next pick, which is Salazzle. Salazzle Dazzle. Uh, yeah, this thing's uh, really fast, which makes it uh, versatile. Well, I, I mean, I guess that's not what makes it versatile, but like, you know, I mean, like, it, it like making, if it, as long as it has uh, speed, it's gonna be able to dish out some uh, some good damage on at least some things. Now, the fastest thing on his team. And uh, yeah, it's good value for round twelve. And yeah, Dude, life round orb. twelve. That's a new meta. It's uh, uh, it's good with the life orb on it. I've used that before, so. It's... All right. Uh, next up is your pick, and it is Glaceon. Walk me through this one. Uh, so yeah, I uh, I really wanted um, some sort of uh, cleric user. Wish Pass and um, just, I don't know. I I uh, it's got some really good uh, defense stats as well as act like the only thing not going for it is its typing as an ice type <laughs> uh, and mediocre speed. But uh, this thing hey, it gets the job done. Yeah, I mean, I really think this thing can. Uh, do some work uh, at some point. So far. All right. Well, I don't expect you to bring it every week, but when it comes, I hope that it does the job. I'll accept it, dude. I'll bring it every week. Let's go. <laughs> By all means, <laughs> especially week nine. Bring it week nine. All right. Uh, next up is Hydra's next pick, which is the round 11 Megalodios pick. Uh, because I don't know why not that thing still be available. I actually commented to my to the people who helped me build. Uh, my front office for the TBL saying Megalodius is still available in like round nine. And they were like, Nah, we don't need it. And I was like, Okay. Um, 
And so he grabbed it, and let's just, I mean, God. Base 160 special attack, base 130 physical attack, base 110 speed. This thing is absolutely monstrous. Does everything Megalodios does except for maybe reflect type and, I don't know, healing wish. Um, but, God, this thing is strong. Uh, and it's hard to break. Uh, it's not, it's not just a, like, frail mon that's gonna take, you know, die to a stiff breeze. It's gonna take a few hits to wear down, and in that time, he sets up a Calm Mind or a Dragon Dance, and you're just gonna say GG. I mean, that's, this thing can, can win a game, and as a round 11 pick, like, I can't believe that happened. Um, but anyway, Hef comes up as the next pick, and he, instead of Megalodios, grabs another Dragon-type Mega in Mega Charizard X in round 11, which I couldn't believe was still available either. So why don't you talk about that one, Playmaker? Uh, wait, what was the pick again? Megazard X. Uh, yeah, so... It's, it's uh, super strong. I used it in some of but I've also, like... The time when, like, uh... X, Y, on, like, in, like, the actual TV show is happening, like, I really liked Alon as a character, and really liked Charizard X, and so I was, like, a huge Charizard X person, and, uh, but yeah, this thing, uh, Dragon Dances all the way, and Flare Blitz, Fire Punch, uh, Dra Dragon Claw, Outrage, uh, it's really cool, uh, like, it can do a lot of things. Uh, Hef, you don't even understand, you don't understand how fatiguing this is, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's brutal. I'm telling you, draft streams are like some of my least favorite streams to do, but they, you know, they're fun and everyone loves them, so. Yeah. I... Gotta, gotta, it's a necessary evil in this community. All right, so Tishan grabs Avalog as his final pick. A spinner, um, you know, I don't know, it, it uses Avalanche sometimes, it spins sometimes, sets up rocks sometimes. Rocks? And other times it doesn't come to the match. I believe he gets rocks. Hold on, let me see, let me see if uh, this is another Goldilla dragon set. Uh, what? Because you know, like you, uh, you love the uh, what call it, the save a and um. No, 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 no. Okay, this is not this is not me being crazy. Does that get so Okay, wrong? Mega Save Light. <laughs> that gets so Mega Save Light. Mega Save Light gets Trick Room. Avala gets Stealth Rocks. I don't know what anyone's talking about. <laughs> it does not get so Rock, my dude. <laughs> I have used Stealth Rocks on this thing more times than I have used Trick Room on Mega Save Live. Alright. Uh, Nuts, dude. Well, it spins rocks, so. Alright. Um, <laughs> next up, we have Splurge with Vika Volt. So, why don't you talk about Vika Volt a little bit, Playmaker? Uh, so, Vika Volt. Um, I actually convinced you to pick this thing up in. Um, uh, at GBA D League thing. Yep. Yeah, this thing's uh, this thing's really cool, especially under Trick Room. They can uh, really do some damage. Uh, it's got more special attack than a Mega Manetric. So like, it's uh, it's pretty good. Assault Fest, Big Volt's also really nice. See, again, again, I'm throwing in that Assault Fest as a as a thing. <laughs> uh, and before, I never use Assault Fest in my. Uh, at any point during TBL, like <laughs> it's like that's right. You thought I was afraid of the salt mass, but nope. Uh, All right. So speaking of Mega Manectric, that will be my Mega. Um, I talked earlier in the stream about how I was going to try to grab a electric, to fast electric type, and opted for Mega Manectric instead of anything else. Um, I think this thing fits my team incredibly well. Um, since I don't have much of a ground weakness, it gives me an electric immunity before a Mega evolves. Um, which was one of the weaknesses my team did have. Uh, and it's Volt Switch hits really hard. It's incredibly fast at 135, which is a speed tier that I was definitely not going to approach. Um, honestly, I think this thing, incredible, incredible wall breaker and, and sometimes sweeper. Um, the fire coverage it gets is awesome. Hidden powers are really nice for it. Um, I'm pretty sure it gets signal beam. Yeah. Um, though, I don't know why... Honestly, all the electrics get signal beam. I haven't figured out why that is, but hey, they do. Um, all right, and take us home, playmaker, with the final pick of the draft, Golurk. Uh, so yeah, Golurk. Can I say uh, something? Oh, man, Bird! Oh, man, Bird's here. <laughs> Finish <laughs> us. Take us home. So bad, yes. Uh, so Golurk, not in the plan at all. Was never a mon I wanted to draft. Uh, in fact, 
this draft was terrible for me with ghost types. Like, round three was going to take Mimikyu. The playmaker's like, you know what, dude? No, I want Mimikyu. It's a good boy. It's my boy. Uh, then, then I was going to take Chandelure, but then David decides to take that round four, like, really reach out for that. And I'm just like, why? That's a round seven, Mon, and I was going to get it, and now I can't. So, uh, yeah. And then, then... I saw that I needed Stealth Rocks, I needed a Ghost type, I needed something bulky, because as you can see, my team's not the bulkiest at the moment. Uh, and I was like, Palisand, perfect mon. It fits exactly what I need. It gives me that tier five that I want. Uh, then Brendan DMs me and saying, hey, bro, you know that mod I was talking about that's really good that I can't believe has lasted all this long as an in tier five? Yeah, it's Palisand. And I'm just like, my good lord. Not again. So, uh, Go Look was a panic pick, 100%, because it's a stealth lock type with ghost. It's a stealth lock type. Yes, that's a typing now, people. Stealth lock type. <laughs> but Go Look, still not a bad mon. Uh, it gets stealth locks, obviously. It gets Iron Fist. It gets all the punches. It gets Drain Punch. It gets the best Shadow Punch in the game. Just hit you up with that one, two. Uh, it's like Rocky Balboa. Um, you know, for a panic pick, it's not a bad pick at all. Uh, I definitely like Go Look. I've used it a couple times. Been pretty happy with it. And uh, excited to see what it does in Season 3. 4, I mean. All right. Well, that'll do it for our uh, final round of the Season 4 draft for the TBL. Just a reminder to everybody here. Um, first off, thank you all for coming out to the draft stream. I know it took a little over three hours, which is about the estimate and timeline I wanted it to be anyway. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way that worked out. Uh, I really thank you guys for showing up, for hanging out. Uh, anyone who spoke during the stream, really appreciate it. Um, you should all make sure you check out all of the coaches if they have YouTube channels. Um, and I will make sure that I post links in places that are accessible to you all. If you have not joined my Discord, do so, and I will post a link to the TBL fan Discord as well in that Discord, um, or if someone wants to grab that and put it in the chat now, um, I wouldn't object to you doing that. Uh, and otherwise, oh, that command is I will be back again tomorrow with Splurge for a TBL Week 1 premiere match uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, hopefully... Um, Following that, I might be playing a little bit of Fire Emblem or something else with Dan. And then at 8 o'clock, uh, I will be having another match for the PCL Week 4, uh, which I intend to stream as well. Night, so PJ. lots of battling tomorrow. Really going to be a lot of fun. Uh, hope to see you all there. Thank you all for hanging out tonight. And that'll do it for the TBL Season 4 Draft stream. Watch out for draft analyses coming out over the next little while from various coaches. And... Take care, everybody. Yeah, bye. That's going to do it. Man.